The following broadcast of Houston Arrows Hockey is a UPN 20 Sports presentation. into a nightmare. From there, the weekend was all downhill, dropping a pair to the Cyclones. The Arrows held the lead on Saturday, but couldn't hold on as Terry Roskowski vented his frustrations at his club's winless streak. Tonight, the ice stand in the way of win number one. A special edition of Saturday Night on Ice is next. Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Tonight, the Houston Arrows take on the Indianapolis Ice in International Hockey League action. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Market Square Arena. I'm Adam Gordon, and I bring in my broadcast partner, Mike Greenlay, and the Arrows 0 and 6, and you know, sometimes hockey players turn things around, try and change up superstitions. We're going to do the same. We're going to wear our golf shirts tonight instead of the stuffy shirts and ties. Well, who says it's going to guarantee to work, but hey, we'll try anything right now, as I'm sure both teams will. Well, one thing that has worked for the Arrows, even though they are 0-6, is their goaltending, and tonight, Rob Dobson will get the start. Well, as I said before, Rob Dobson is a very upbeat kind of person. He's not going to let his last loss get him down, because he played very well, and he shouldn't feel bad about, about the 5-3 loss uh, that last week to Cincinnati. So look for him to play another strong game. Look for him to challenge a lot. And we take a quick look at our keys to victory, and I think they're very in-depth, and we go down to our head coach, Terry Ruskowski. Hey, Terry, what are tonight's keys to victory? Well, Adam, tonight's keys are win, uh, win, and win. <laughs> a lot of thought obviously went into those keys. Well, it's, it's true. The Arrows definitely have to stop the bleeding, and a team like the Indianapolis Ice, who've lost last three in a row, are ripe for the picking. And they are led by a couple of real outstanding hockey players, first of which, Kip Miller. Well, Kip Miller, last season, he was the Turner Cup MVP. Uh, he's also won the Hobie Baker Award in college, and uh, he looks he's going to be a guy that's going to be a guy to key on. And the other guy who's on fire has got to be Daniel Gauthier. Well, four goals, five assists. He needs one point for the fastest five-game start in ice history, so he's looking to break some records tonight, so you got to watch him as well. Up next, we'll visit with the assistant coach of the Arrows, Dave Tippett. We'll be right back. Tonight's special edition of Saturday Night on Ice is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, by Columbia Healthcare Partners, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Whataburger. Welcome back to Indianapolis. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay as we are getting sent to drop the puck as uh, evidently the officials don't go on the same clock we do. I mean, we've been doing this for how long, Mike? And we know what time we're supposed to get started. And Maybe, uh, maybe they're just a little excited as both, both teams are to uh, get going and hopefully break their uh, break their losing skids. You know, it, 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 it amazes me, but we are underway. and. Our referee tonight is Bernie DeGrace. Mark Hahn and Dave Huffle are the linesmen. The Arrows starting up front with a line of Scott Arneal, Mark Freer, Mark Cipriano. Defensively, Steve Jakes and Miles O'Connor. The Indianapolis Ice use Jeff Buchanan on defense. Well, now they're going to make a quick, and Ivan Dropa. And then up front, the line of Kip Miller, Ethan Morrow, and Eric Manlo. Drop of the puck, and we're Back at it as Indianapolis shoots it into the arrow zone and back is Al Conway to gather it in. We've got the arrows with an early power play here. They haven't put it up on the board and I didn't see the call. So the arrows are on a power play. Puck is tipped away by Manlo and Fur takes over back in his own zone. I think that's the quickest penalty I've ever seen called. I don't even game. know what it was. It was on Ethan Morrow. And the puck goes down into the Indianapolis zone. Out of the net, Andre Rasico. 
And the puck to the near side, and the ice clear it back at center ice. So let's regroup here. Now that they're on the power play, Laniel's playing defense with Conroy. It's Arneal with Freer and Townsend. Arneal finds one to Townsend left side. Base in the left circle. Back to the line, Laniel couldn't hold it in. It'll go all the way back down into the Houston zone. And Dobson, who starts in goal for Houston, will play it from behind the net. To the right side, Conroy reversed it near side. After the puck, it's Daniel Gauthier. Came back to the line, and it was held in by Jeff Sarawick. Puck in deep, barrel territory. Turn around by Sylvain Turgeon. Turgeon, left side, shoots it into Indianapolis territory, picked up by Slavchenko, it was turned over, and it is cleared by the ice, but not out. Goes down low, McCrory flipped it out in front, Turgeon shooting, it was blocked, it never did get the Rassico. Puck near side, Serwick na nabbed it away, but the arrows got it back. Slavchenko, base of the circle, cuts out, turns, can't get the shot away, and it's stripped away by James Black, and the ice will shoot it down. Well, I think, Adam, I think tonight, uh, you're going to see a lot of unexpected things, as we've already seen, but I think the arrows are going to have to be ready for something unexpected by the Indianapolis Ice. Puck controlled by Houston. Steve Jakes motors a pass back out at center for a breaking O'Connor, and he drilled it into the Indianapolis zone. Left side, Slipchenko jammed it back. Power play down to 14 seconds. Jakes rolled it right side, O'Connor back to Jakes, top of the slot. Jakes waiting, waiting, slides it down, and Turgeon, the hash marks, getting set to the line. O'Connor tipped it, Turgeon, he was, he shoots, deflecting right on. And Rashtako stopped it. Puck to the far boards and Tropa chipped it to the line. Not out. Held in by O'Connor. Penalty is over. Teams at five aside. Puck came to neutral. And Houston takes over. Miles O'Connor drifting back to his own blue line. Four checked by Steve Dubinsky. And he'll just throw it off the glass and out at center. Buchanan trying to roll it back into the arrow zone. Knocked away and Jake shoveled it back into the Indianapolis zone. Buchanan has to go back to play. 17.35 to go in this first period. No score in the hockey game. Buchanan long lead pass. This is Ethan Morrow. And the arrows take over at center. Jim Pack. Rolls went into the Indianapolis zone. Rastico out of the net, and Buchanan plays near side. Jeff Buchanan pass to Kip Miller. He splits the D, cutting in, and nice defense by Gord Donnelly to tip it away. Manlo, a long shot, and Dobson returns that with a save to the corner. Kip Miller tried to center one for Manlo. It was not free. Eric Manlo tried to throw one in there, and it comes back to the left point. Tropa held it left side. A shot by Moro. Or, uh, Moro wide, and now the Earls clear it out at center. Jeff Sarawick, one of the top defensemen in the AHL last year with the Providence Bruins. He had 62 points on 28 goals, 34 assists, fires it into the Earls zone. Yo left side, motors to center, long lead pass, picked up by Maurice, hits the line with Cipriano. Puck goes down low, and Rastrico stops. Back to play it, it's... Igor Yulinov. Yulinov fired one of the line, not out, held in Cipriano. Cipriano turning, giving the puck to Arneal, slides it back to the line. Here's O'Connor, the try right, and a right pass save. Eight by Rassico as that blue line bomb was right on. Cipriano cuts in with his shot, and I think Rassico shuffled the pads and made another save there. Yulinov turned to the left side for James Black, and he'll clear to center, and here come the ice. Across the line, Gauthier, and a shot whistled wide by Latop, and play whistled down. Let's take timeout, two, nothing, or excuse me, no score. They're throwing the score, but it's nothing, nothing. We'll be right back. It's a lot of pressure on all the players to keep, to keep this up. I think they're looking to, like we said in the pregame there, to stop the bleeding tonight. Arrows get the puck shot to center, and it's charged down by the Indianapolis defense, played by Frederick Barbo. Now jamming along the boards, James Black had it tipped away, and the Arrows hold it in. Third down looking for Arneal, but Barbo able to clear it. Now, it's picked up by Houston Arneal trying to shovel it in there. He's harassed by Gauthier, and it's clear to the line and out at center ice. And the arrows go back. Laniel slipped it to the line, not out. Oh, they do say it was out as Gauthier was in ahead, and that will be offsides with 15.42 to go in the first. And I, I'll get the score right. There's no score. We were going to break there, and they, they put two, and then they put three, and then they put four up on the arrows. Fastest scored. five goals I've ever seen scored. Here we have Andre Rasico, who has got a 4.5 goals against average this year so far. He's played two games. And on the other end, you obviously have uh, Rob Dobson, who's played very well, hasn't been rewarded very much with uh, as far as stats and everything like that, but uh, he's played very well. And uh, Coach Terry Ruskowski going with him tonight, then sure. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good idea, too, because like I said he's been practicing very well, and uh, yeah, he's going to do some good things tonight, I think. Ice turned the puck in their own zone. Sirowick rolled one out at center, and Jim Pack fired it into the Indianapolis zone, and then it went over the glass and out of play. 15-28 to go in the first. No you know, score. You know, Adam, you look at both these teams, they've both had a, a little bit of trouble off the, off the start this year. You have uh, 
both both teams scoring. Uh, you know, we have the goals for as far as Houston's concerned are 2.6 per game, and uh, you have Indianapolis with 4.5 per game. But you look at the goals against; they're both giving up pretty much the same amount of goals per game, with six on Indianapolis and about uh, almost six for the Arrows. So it could be a high-scoring game. It might not be. It's going to be. It's going to be a good one to watch. Off the faceoff, Dubinsky cleared to center. Ivan Dropa chipped it out at center. Jake's trying to move it all on the fireboards and swept it into the ice zone, and Tershaw's got it. He'll move it into the corner. Tershaw trying to move in there. He's bumped off the play, stays with a pocket of penalty coming up to the ice. Delayed call. It goes down low, and it's picked up by Sarowick. And we are going to get a holding minor on Indianapolis, and the Arrows will get their second power play with just about five minutes gone in the first. No score. I think the call is going to be probably obstruction interference. <laughs> I can't be positive, but I Six saw him signal for the uh, interference. interference. And uh, you know, I was talking to Troy Gamble, and Indiana. there's one thing he noticed Number is that Evolve. the goals against are up in the league, and the save percent is down. And there you see him getting in the way of Slavchenko. He'll get the call there. And uh, one of the reasons why these goals against are up in the league, I think. The league is just getting better. Things like obstruction rule are opening up the game a lot more. And, and also, if you if you look at the look at the lineups, it's an all too frequent calling card where you see all these guys have NHL experience of some sort. Off the faceoff, Jakes gives to Slivchenko. He's wheeling and dealing along the left side. Tipped it back to the line. Jakes rolled it over to the right side. O'Connor a one-time shot, and that was stuck aside by Rasico. Puck near point. Jakes teed it up, faked the shot. O'Connor one-time shot, missed badly. Didn't get good wood on it, and it's cleared to Kip Miller, and he'll clear it right back down the ice. Penalty down to a minute and a half as Dobson slows. Dobson has faced just one shot on goal. The Arrows have three on Andre Rasico. Jakes from behind the cage. Lead pass in skates, but it came to McCrory. Rolled slip. Trinko with a nice move. Right in Turgeon. And a great blocker save made by Rasico. Wow, unbelievable save by Andre Rasico. Puck controlled by the Arrows behind the net. Kershaw had it stripped away to the line. O'Connor, quick pass. Jakes lets the shot go. It was blocked, and then it was cleared by Eric Mantle all the way down the ice. Dobson slows with a minute to go in the power play. 14 minutes to play in the first, a scoreless hockey game. And here come the Houston Arrows, Al Conroy. Lead pass, center ice, Arneal. He'll circle back in his own zone and weave it up. Arneal. Rolled one to the left side, Freer tipped one ahead. Conroy bro broken up, though, by Jeff Sarowick. And we got a whistle as the puck hit with a high stick, and the puck will go all the way back down. We're a face-off in the Houston zone with six minutes. And what, down in the first, no score. What an excellent play down uh, in the ice end there. You see Slivchenko getting the puck from a quarry. He makes a very good move, and he just sends Turgeon in all alone. But a good butterfly save by Andre Rossico to keep the score tied at zero. Face off to the left, Rob Dobson, Daniel Gauthier out there with James Black for the penalty killing, Jeff Sarowick defensively with Frederick Barbo. Drop the puck, nice win it, but it came right to Scott Arneal, and he'll send it back for Al Conroy in behind the cage, attacked by Gauthier, who nearly took it away, but Mark Freer is back after, uh, I don't know, maybe just a strained shoulder and didn't play Sunday in Cincinnati, but he's ready to give her. Freer through the neutral zone. Chip one ahead for Laniel, but it was scooped up by Andre Rasico with 25 remaining on the power play. And he will hold on. Andre Rasico, of course, played for the Montreal Canadiens organization. But uh, when you're playing behind Patrick Waugh, your ice time is going to be a little limited. Well, yeah, he did, he did play some in the few years that he was there. He, but uh, you're right, when you're playing behind someone like uh, Patrick Waugh, you, you're going to get limited, limited action. But uh, he did OK while he was there. Speaking of the Montreal Canadiens, how about the shakeup there? Well, uh, you got uh, search of search of art on his way out, or out, I should say, and the Demers out, and so they're looking for replacements. Do you know how to coach, Adam? <laughs> no. <laughs> O'Connor rolls one down, and it's controlled as a shot right on. It was tipped away, and Freer pushed off the puck by Sarowick, and the ice will bring it out. Center for James Black, played last year with the Las Vegas Thunder, crossed the arrow line, and was bumped by Townsend. Arrows go back, Freer in his own zone. He's got only five seconds remaining on the power play. Laniel turns in his own zone, breaks it up ice. Laniel give it to Arneal, across center ice and across the blue line he comes. Chipped one for Townsend, cuts one over for Arneal, was blocked by Steve Dubinsky, chased down by Townsend, get it back for Arneal at the hash marks, but it was jabbed away by Dubinsky, and Steve Dubinsky will clear it out at center ice, played by Andy McIntyre, bringing out the center ice. McIntyre leaves it for Ivan 
Dropa, and he'll fire it into the arrow zone. A high lobbing drive as it came in, and Dobson, wow, napping a little bit, it looked like on that Dubinsky centering pass, but Dobson was there. Puck came to center, though, as Ulanoff couldn't hold it in. And they'll bring the face off to center as we take time out. No score, we'll be right back. Scoreless hockey game, 12.43 to go in this first period. Calling all fans, Houston Aero season ticket packages are on sale now for the 95-96 season. Avoid the draft and list today. Call 627-ARROW. Operators on duty now. Join the Aero Force and get ready for the battle of a lifetime. That's 627-ARROW. Face off at center. Maurice with Yo. And Kevin Malgunas. Drop of the puck. Ice have it. Jeff Buchanan, right side, shoots it into the Houston Arrow zone. And Donnelly will play it. Gord Donnelly from behind the net. Ooh, fired it right off the skates of Andy McIntyre. They grind it out in the corner. Puck chipped in line. It came out at center ice. And Yo off to the races. Can he get there? No. Darren Kimball will. And it goes back into the Indianapolis zone. A delayed penalty coming up. And it's going to be on the Arrows. A delayed penalty on Houston. So Donnelly will hustle back to play it. And we will get the whistle. And it will be holding. We've got 12-16 left and no score. Well, Adam, the Arrows couldn't do anything with their two power green. plays right off the bat. And I wonder what the Indianapolis Ice have for their power play. Their overall power play this year is, is third in the league at 21.2%. So that's one team the Arrows are going to have to be very careful when it comes to the penalty department. Now Gunas gets uh, two minutes for holding the stick, and Terry Ruskowski's already biting his lip. But uh, doesn't agree with that one, I don't think. Face off at center ice, so the ice on their first power play. Their power play, not bad, fourth in the IHL at 21.6%. But clear to center. And here come the ice. Daniel Gauthier trying to bring it into the zone. He does. It's knocked free by Jakes. He'll hustle behind the net. Bang it off the boards, and it came to center ice, and Kip Miller has to hustle back. Boy, what a lot of fun it was for me to watch him during the Turner Cup playoffs with the Denver Grizzlies. I mean, he was the man. A lot of focus was on Tommy Sallow, the netminder, but <laughs> the rest of it was on him. He's the kind of guy that'll just try and deke the whole team out sometimes, you know, and, and able to do it sometimes, too. Absolutely. He'll come right at you. Likes to control the puck, likes to handle it. As you said, the top of the cast played Michigan State and a Hobie Baker Award winner. Ice have it. No score in the hockey game. 11 and a half to play in the first period. James Black across the arrow line for Daniel Gauthier. And he'll shoot it into the arrow zone, but Jakes is there. And Jakes will just hammer it all the way down the ice. And that'll be a 200-foot save for Andre Rasico. Kip Miller goes back to play. Miller, long lead pass picked up by... Jeff Buchanan, a former teammate of my color man to my right, Mike Greenlay, in fact, won the Turner Cup together. Certainly did. He's going to be a tough guy in front of their net. Buchanan, chip one ahead for Gauthier, across the line, looking for Sergey Klimovich. Gauthier, center, Klimovich, stopped by Thompson, rebound. Oh, unbelievable. Thompson, three, outstanding save. Another drive is high and wide. Rob Thompson standing on his spleen to make some great saves in front. Wow. Puck to the near side. And the arrows clear it down the ice. Three outstanding saves by Rob Dobson. You know, Adam, uh, he's going to make those saves for you, but you just can't keep asking your goaltenders to make those kind of saves. Unbelievable. Away the ice come, but Yo chipped it free from Ethan Morrow. Morrow got it back, though. Base in the left circle. Power play down to 10 seconds. Arrows shoot it down the ice. So obviously, as we look at the first half of this period, the arrows have been uh, a lot better than what we've seen in the first six games. They're skating so much better as the puck came to Yo, a bouncing puck that Jakes tries to corral. Jakes trying to slide one for Yo, and oh no, Jakes was just creamed by Eric Manlow, and Jakes slow to get up. Uh, was kind of turning, and it looked like that Jakes kind of turned into him. Malgunas coming in there. I don't know if this would be a penalty. There was going to be no penalty, but I'm not sure if Jakes turned into it or if he was drilled from behind. Well, I think it was... I think Jakes was facing the boards already, but it wasn't really from behind. It was from the side, I think, a little bit. He just The problem is with those kind of hits is they're about two or three feet off the boards, and when they do fall down, their head goes right into the lower part of the boards, obviously the most sturdy part of the board. 
And there, it's always dangerous. I mean, that, that's one thing the defensemen don't like is that new rule. Just because you can't hold up guys, here's something else that can get be, get very scary as he dumps the puck in and he gets hit from the side. Oh, that's but, a penalty. Well, I don't think so. I don't know. He shot yeah. the puck and he got hit from the side. The only the reason why that yeah. is so dangerous is because he's two or three feet off the boards. If he was up against the boards, it would it would just be bounce off the boards. But when you're that like, remember the Donnelly hit against uh, in Cincinnati? He was four feet, four or five feet off the boards. He got hit and he went flying into the board as well. So those guys got to watch it as soon as they make their pass. Yeah, the more I think about it, I think you're right. It's close though. It's it very is. close. Definitely. And that was the thing with Donnelly. Turgeon comes in from the back, header, Ransico, stop that. Conroy in the near circle. He lost an edge, down he went. And Barbo trying to play it. It was chipped away. Arrow's working hard. Turgeon trying to cut in front. Turgeon still with it. Turgeon gives it to Chico scores! Vadim Slavchenko! And the arrow's on the board. It's a 1-0 hockey game. Well, an excellent play there. And, uh, you know, the one thing that the arrows have been doing since the beginning of the game is they've been coming into the zone as a unit. They haven't been sending one or two guys in uh, and all, all spread out. They've been coming in as a unit, and then when they get down there, they're working hard behind the net. That was all created because Turgeon fights for behind the net. He picks it off the mesh there, and then he just works, works right in front, throws a puck in front, and Slavchenko gets it somehow and just... Blast it, five hole, I believe. It was kind of hard to see that, but it was an excellent effort by Turgeon and Slipchenko and the whole line, as a matter of fact. Slipchenko, three game point streak now to four. He scored both goals Sunday in Cincinnati and has one here, and the Arrows lead at one to nothing. Nine and a half to go, first period. Puck to center ice. Andy McIntyre turning for Indianapolis, shot it into the Arrows zone. Darren Kimball, a fluttering centering pass that was knocked away by Thompson. And the Arrows have it. Arneal, center for Freer, busting across the line. He hands it over to the strike by Cipriano, and it was high and wide. Walked to the near side, Kimball cleared. Worked on by Arneal, hands it over to Sarawick. Jeff Sarawick across the line, long shot, and it was a blocker saved by Dobson. Along the left wing boards, it came behind. Darren Kimball centered, hit skates. Again, it was centered, and it just missed McIntyre. Puck goes down low. Behind the net, Kimball wrestling for it. Darren Kimball chipped it off the boards for Dubinsky in front. The shot blocked as Jim Pack slid over there. Like, well, I'd say like a Joey Cora play with the Mariners and uh, got in front of that. That's about the only thing I have to savor from the Mariner game last night as the ice shoot it in. Controlled by Thompson and chipped out at center. Ice have it. Buchanan ripped it into Houston territory. Oh, it takes a weird hop. And Oh, man, that takes me back last year in Atlanta when the Arrows Mark Fair scored a goal like that. Scott McCrory, lead pass, Vio, and the Arrows are off sides, and we take time out. one nothing Houston. More IHL action when we return. Bud Ice, the official beer of the IHL. It's over, and you can put this one on ice. Ladies and Lots of IHL action in the summit for the Arrows coming next Friday, or this Friday. The Detroit Vipers in town, and this Sunday, the Atlanta Knights. And a little week off, and then it's the Las Vegas Thunder on the 27th and 28th. And Mike Greenlay, uh, you must have a special spot in your heart for goaltending, and we've got some gems from Rob Dobson. Well, Dobson definitely making some great saves tonight so far, and especially that one little flurry, which we will see later, as he's stood up well so far tonight. Puck goes into the arrow zone. Back to get it is Laniel. He'll chip it off the boards. Malgunas will play it as he turns in his own end. Hand it over to McCrory. Rink-wide pass for Yo. Hits the line. Right in Malgunas to drive, and he missed the net. Picked up by Gauthier, rolled it off the boards. James Black pushed off the puck by Donnelly. Now Gunas, a little shot that was stuck aside by Rasico, and it's picked up by Eric Lecomte. Sent it out at center. Gauthier back to Lecomte, busting down the right side, and McCroy will stay with him, and the Euros turn it around. Donnelly rolled it off the boards. It came to the line, not out. And here is Mark Laniel. Give it to Yo. Neutral ice hoists it into Indy territory. And Yulinov goes back. It is 
Igor Yulinov pass at center. Picked up by Manlo, but it was tipped away. And here come the arrows. Al Conroy across the line. Conroy trying to slice through the defense. He chopped, sliced, and diced, but couldn't quite get through it anymore. Conroy, base to the right, circle to the line. Jakes tipped it. O'Connor worked one right in there, but it was tipped away by Yulinov. And clear to the line. Not out. Jakes held it in. Give it down right side. Slipchenko looks in front. Slivy makes the move. Couldn't get it to Terzal. It rolled back to the left side, and it's Eric Manlo who got it out at center ice. No, that's not the same guy that sings I Write the Songs. <laughs> Well, it's time to give away some watch and win arrows tickets and dinner for two at Billy Blues. Let's throw it to Mark and Lanny from The Buzz, gentlemen. Hi, we're Mark and Lanny from The Morning Buzz. Hope you're enjoying the arrows game. We've got something to give away. Call 777-5772 right now and you're gonna win, Mark. Arrows tickets and also dinner at Billy Blues. Woo! Yeah, it's big stuff. Just dial the number one more time. 777-5772. And while we answer the phones here, we return you to more fighting at the arrows game. We don't fight. We get along, don't we? Oh, these guys don't fight either, do they? No! <laughs> Jeez, what game are they watching? Thanks, guys. Get on the phones. As we're trying to give away some arrows tickets. Coming up, I believe we're giving away a trip. Is that not true? As the puck is controlled, Kip Miller, Jeff Sarawick, lets a shot go and dops in the stick save, and it'll go to the far side. Miller chipped it down. Manlo looks in front for Morrow. It cut behind the net, and we're going to get another penalty coming up. I think Jakes is going to go off for an interference. Uh, that's a second interference call the, that the Arrows have taken tonight. So the Arrows are going to sit down. Steve Jakes, he's got a little bit of a shiner on his uh, right eye. Is that, did he have that today? No, he's, he's had that for a couple of days, okay. and uh, it kind of came thing from the Cincinnati series. Yeah, and, I didn't uh, see him I after think the he, Cincinnati game. I think what it is, he, he took a high stick or something like that, and it just caught him up under the eye. I don't think he required any stitches, but it did catch him pretty good. Here you have the uh, Jakes holding, and that's a perfect example of the obstruction interference. It allowed Miles O'Connor to get in there and play the puck, but you know it stopped the, the Indianapolis forechecker from getting it, and that's a, that's a prime example of an obstruction interference call. Steve Jakes, who led the team with plus minus a one time plus four, but then kind of had a little trouble in the Cincinnati series. But he's just he and Mark Laniel, I think, have been probably the steadiest guys on the blue line thus far in the season. Well, they they like to stay at home and like to take care of business down low in front of their own net. So right now, I think that's what the arrows need is to take care of business around their own net. Face off, left side of Don. Thompson arrows, second time they've been shorthanded. Their penalty killing has struggled as they come in 70.6% on the season. You definitely want it in the mid 80s, so some work to do. They kill off the first Indy chance. Right side, James Black, give it to Daniel Gauthier. He's been on fire with four goals and five assists. And it back to the left point, Jeff Sarawick. Looking down along the boards for James Black. Came over on a deal with the Orlando Solar Bears. Never really spent any time with him. He came over from Vegas, went to Orlando, and now here to Indy. Puck behind the net, James Black. Back to the left point. Kip Miller just back top of the slot. Missed Black with a pass. It came to Gauthier. Pulls up the hash marks. Left wing boards for James Black. Sends it back down. Gauthier cutting in behind the net. Trying to circle it out in front. Power play down to a minute 23. Ice with the puck. Give it to Kip Miller. Drifting top of the slot. Waiting, waiting. Long shot. Tipped away by Jim Pack. He's worked on by Klimovich. Pack fell on top of the puck, trying to find a way to play it. Klimovich giving it to him a little bit down there, and Jimmy Pack on top, and he will hold on. Of course, Jimmy Pack will be joining us in the second period intermission. And I mean, what a story he is. I mean, play, growing up, born and raised in Korea, and kind of interesting to ask him how in the world you get started with ice out there. And there's not a lot of ice in Korea, and of course, his jersey hangs in the Hall of Fame there. Well, I, I, I seem to play hockey, and I was born in Brazil, so yeah, <laughs> everyone it, everyone finds a way, and it, it's it's I think it has a lot a compliment for the sport because you know people come from all all different races and creeds and everything, and they, they try the sport out, and most of them like it. Terry Ruskowski, he's not very animated, is he? Oh no, he's very very quiet, subdued person, <laughs> always on fire. He is. He's a very intense person. I he like anyone else likes to win and. He usually wears his heart on his sleeve. Puck controlled by O'Connor, drilled it along the boards and got it out. Of course, the arrows can ice it as much as they want. They're shorthanded for another 63 seconds. And they should because you have Miller out there, you have oh. Black, and you have Gauthier. They're, they're the 
three out of the top four scorers for the ice right now. And a pass came to Gauthier, but he couldn't quite corral it at the arrow blue line. Had to regroup at center. And one of the top offensive defensemen, Jeff Sarawick, he was in the AHL last year. It'll be interesting to see how he makes the, the change to the eye. There's not much difference. Puck controlled by Black, overskated compliments of Mark Laniel. And the arrows take over. Al Conroy. Roll one for Laniel. Arrows come short and Laniel busting in, shooting. Rebusico, a left pad save. Al Conroy behind the net. Center, Laniel, score! Mark Laniel! He went upstairs where the baby was sound asleep and the Arrows a short handed goal. 2-0 Houston. Well, the Arrows took great advantage of having uh, Kip Miller on defense. And then also you said you have Sarawak out there. But uh, two, two Arrows all alone in front of the net. You had, uh, Ar you had Laniel coming in. Getting a shot and, and a great save by Rasico, but after that, Miller and Sarawak just couldn't take care of the responsibilities in front of their own net. And a good job by Conroy as he just feeds it out front. Laniel's all alone out there. He just takes his time and upstairs it goes. And Laniel doing good this year so far. I think that's his fifth point, second goal of the season. So Laniel, the leading defenseman for the Arrows, gets the goal. As Greenlee alluded to, number two on the air and a short-handed goal at that. Both his goals on specialty teams. The first goal was a power play goal that he got earlier in the year. I believe it was against Detroit. Darren Kimball in the arrow zone. Patley with McCrory. A couple of 20s in the corner. Power play down to two seconds. Jeff Buchanan, long shot blocked. It came and scooted in front. And it was pushed away by Scott McCrory. McCrory behind the cage. Belted by Dubinsky, but he got it ahead. And here comes Houston. Center Jim Pack. Fired it into the Indy zone, out of the net, Rochefort. 4-10 to play in the first 2-0 Houston. Puck left side for Andy McIntyre. Miller off to the races, but a pass instead to Kimball. It came into the arrow zone. And a two-line pass being whistled. We take timeout. Houston 2, Indianapolis nothing. This is Saturday night on ice. Sure to join us November 11th on UPN 20 and KPRC 950 Radio for the Arrows in the Milwaukee Admirals. That's our next telecast. Be at 7 o'clock from Bradley Center in Milwaukee. And uh, no, Bob Euchre will not be doing color. But what a beautiful building that is if you've ever oh. had a chance to see that. We did a couple of TV. I think we did one TV game out of there last year. And if, be sure to watch. Just the, the building is terrific. It's one of the top three buildings in the IHL. It's in the so I would rank them real quickly Cleveland Detroit and then and then Milwaukee now I haven't seen Orlando yet but I think I suffice it to say that's the way it goes and now we've got a break for Miller he got behind the defense lets the shot go Thompson stopped it puck back in front and it's Ethan Morrall giving to Miller quick shot block and the arrows have it O'Connor heads up as it's cleared down the ice back to play it Frederick Barbo Hold it near side as Igor Ulanov just sent down yesterday for conditioning by the Chicago Blackhawks. Rolled one ahead for Morrow. And Freer trying to clear it and it came out at center. Conroy, by the way, got the assist on the Laniel shorthanded goal. Bucket center ice. And the arrows battling for it. Slivchenko trying to tip one ahead. Arneal in there as well. And finally Manlo brought it in. It was cleared to center ice. Gochi back in. That's off sides. And play whistled down. Face off brought to center with three minutes to go in the first. Two nothing Houston shots at this point. 11-8 in favor of the Arrows and Scott O'Neill, guy that he's the guy that you really watch to pick his play up throughout uh, the next several games. I know he hasn't been happy with his offensive output in this start of the year. Well, he hasn't been happy, but he still leads the team with yeah. uh, six points. You know, I mean, you look at guys like him and Al Conrad. Both of them have both of them have come up and led by example. Even though he's not getting the points that he wants right now, he's still putting the effort forth, and he's, he's being a leader, and that, that's what the guys need right yeah, now. Yeah, and I should clarify what I'm trying to say is he hasn't had any help is what I'm more trying to say. His offensive production is even better when he can get Mark Fur cooking. And Freers, he's another guy I know that as things go on, and he's going to be there. Black is controlled by Indianapolis. Jeff Buchanan watched by Conroy. LeCompte picks it up, shoots to center, and here comes Gauthier on a break. He's in alone, and he ripped the shot wide of the net. There's been about three chances that have been near breakaways. That has clearly been the biggest breakaway that Indianapolis has had. So obviously teams have found some way of getting behind the arrow defense this so this early part of the season because we've seen a lot of breakaways. A lot of breakaways, and they're they're sending them up with speed, hitting them right in stride. And I think I think the arrows are going to have to try and stagger their defense a little bit more in order to catch that. 
Puck knocked down with a high stick, and the faceoff comes nice back to right center ice. But that aside, you look, you say, you look at the shots, uh, 11 to 8 for Houston. You have to realize that tonight it seems like the arrows have, you know, made a little more concerted effort to to try and be defensive as they're diving and blocking and shots and all kinds of stuff like that. So I think, uh, except for those, except for those uh, few mistakes, which have been costing them. They're doing a pretty good job so far. Congratulations for Winston. I hope I pronounced this right. Searson, S-E-Y-E-R-E-I-S-E-N. Searson, Winston Searson, who lives in Katy. Winner of dinner for two at Billy Blues and some Arrows tickets. Congratulations. Again, stay with us. I'm not going to tell you when we're going to give away a trip, but I'm told we have a little trip that we're going to give away for the watch and win, so be sure to stay with us. Dubinsky. Jammed one into the arrow zone. Yo, back to play it. Four check by Kimball behind the cage. Jeans popped it free. He was pounded into the boards by Dubinsky, and Kimball came away with a puck. Kimball centered one, but McCrory intercepted that, and off the center he comes. McCrory busting down the right side, trying to slide through the check. Yo cuts in, pulls up, hit the brakes, and then crashed and burned as he lost an edge. Puck was shot by Indy out at center, and Houston's got it. Miles O'Connor. Bumps it into Indy territory, and Jeff Sirowick takes over. Shuffling through the neutral zone, he will come. Pass right side, Kimball. Dumps it into Arrow territory. Far corner, Jakes. Watched by Miller. Oh, lost an edge, and he went hard into the boards, but pops right back up. Held in by Barbo. But Freer is there. Pushed along the boards by Manlow. They grind it out in there. They're skate to skate along the boards. That's to the right of Rob Dobson. Puck picked loose by Miles O'Connor, having trouble with it. It came out in front, this shot. And Dobson, a right pad save, and a beauty. Oh, man, Rob Dobson again with an outstanding save. He denied him like a stolen bank card on that one, and the Arrows are able to clear it. Tell you, what a key save to make with only one minute left in this period. That's going to that's gonna show big coming into the second period, I tell you. Oh, they can't all be gems, but maybe they can with Rob Dobson. Miles, Miles O'Connor had a little bit of trouble with it as he's trying to find someone to hit, and he, there's no outlet. And the puck comes right out front. What a shot and a good save as Dobson was coming across, but he poked his toe out and kicked that to the corner. It's a good thing he didn't cut his toenails today. <laughs> that was a toenail save because he really had to stretch on that one as he was, he was doing the patented leg drag, as they call it. It's a goaltending style. He dragged his leg on that one, and he got his toe on it. Excellent save with the time remaining in the period. Dobson about as sharp as the edge of town this part of the period. Puck controlled by and in a shot that drizzles in there. And Dobson hooked it over to McCrory and spanked it out at center. O'Neill after it. But back is Yule and off. He'll clear to center. Kip Miller chipped one ahead for Eric Manlow. In on goal. Shoots. Dobson got a piece of it and then it ricocheted to the near side. Yulinov chipped it down, Manlow, base of the right circle, watched by Laniel, slipped it down for Miller. Kip Miller into the slot, waits, sends one in front, it redirected wide. And it's Houston, Arneal clear, but not out. Yulinov a drive, blocked by Laniel, trying to clear it, and he will. You know, the arrows, if they waited, could have brought it out, but I can see at this point, Terry Ruskowski says, look, just get it out of the zone. Block control by Gord Donnelly, and he'll just shovel that one all the way down the ice, and that will be the period. Horn sounds, and we're through 20 minutes of action in this first period, and the Arrows lead it by a score of 2-0. We'll talk about that first period and more when we return. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to Market Square Arena. The Arrows leading the Indianapolis Ice by a score of 2-0. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And wow, what a difference a game makes. Well, I tell you what, and they've, they've come out to a start like this before. I think the key is going to be to continue this kind of pressure. You know, the thing is, one of the things we've talked about for the Houston Arrows is to come out in the first 10 minutes, don't get yourself down. Not only did they come out in the first 10 minutes, they come out in the second 10 minutes and put together a good period. But I'm sure Terry Ruskowski is telling him baby steps. We've still got two periods to go. And so and the reason why they had success that period is because they came over the line as a group, they forced them as a unit, and they didn't try and do everything individually. Well, for those of you that follow a lot in the Houston ice community, the Arrows and hockey in general, the Aerodrome is one of the finest complexes in Houston and maybe in the United States, and they are expanding, and our Barry Warner finds out why. Less than 18 months after the groundbreaking ceremony for the Aerodrome, the Arrows practice facility, another sheet of ice is being ready for the thousands of skaters out in Fort Bend County that have taken to the ice. Former UT and pro defensive lineman Kiki Diala heads up Southwest Real Estate Enterprises, the developers and operators of the Aerodrome Complex. 
Is he surprised by the demand for more facilities? I don't think so. I mean, this is a great community to be in, Sugarland. Willowbrook will be the same way. Uh, demographically, it's, it's ideal for the type of market that we're after. Um, so it did not surprise me at all. In fact, um, um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Willowbrook maybe does even better than here. The same commitment the Arrow organization has dedicated itself to on and off the ice, evident each and every day on the job by the construction crews. They're busy working at both sites in an effort to make phase two at Sugarland and the new Willowbrook Room state-of-the-art facilities. When the doors finally open, Houstonians will find the drooms to be more than just another rink to lace on the skates. We have Ticketmaster, we've got Arrowwear merchandise, we've got a full line of you know, hockey and figure skating equipment, we've got closed circuit TV, in-house restaurant, lockers, showers, uh, skate rentals, you name it, this facility's basically got it. And if you build something like that, that really uh, creates an excitement for people. In the next few months, the construction crews will be finished with their massive work. The hard hats will be replaced by Aero owners at yet another Aerodrome ribbon cutting ceremony. That'll double the workload for the general manager, Brian Renault, a man who does not have your typical eight to five day at the office. It sure isn't. Five o'clock is usually, uh, 5 a.m. is usually the time that one of us are here. Uh, myself or one of the managers. I really try and avoid that shift, but uh, someone's got to do it. The moms are waiting for us to uh, let their kids on the ice. Figure skaters are the first ones here, and uh, they're, they're really dedicated. Hockey is the main reason the aerodrome was built, so Terry Ruskowski and his aero players could have a place to practice, train, and work out. But the love affair that Houstonians have with skating serves as a springboard for the growth on the ice. By far, our biggest success has been in our programs, our Learn to Skate programs and our Learn to Play hockey programs. Those two programs feed our figure skating, um, um, our advanced figure skating programs and our leagues, our youth hockey leagues and our adult hockey leagues. So one is feeding the other. Um, one day, our leagues will, will be bigger than our, our um, classes, but for the, for the time being, our classes are our biggest uh, revenue generator. Like the great success story of the Arrows at the Summit Ice, the Aerodrome has been built for affordable family entertainment. Reporting for UPN 20, I'm Barry Warner. Thanks, Bear. 2-0, the Arrows lead in the first intermission, and Mike and I will have more when we return. Arrows lead Indianapolis 2-0 back inside Market Square Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And it seems to me that we've seen a certain goaltender stand on his head in that first period uh, in Rob Dobson. They certainly did. I mean, the Arrows called on him to make some great saves, especially that one with one minute left in the period to hold him to no goals, and he came up big. And whenever goaltenders come up big, it means your offense can do the rest, and that leads us to the scoring summary, and the Arrows got on the board first. At 10-19, Vadim Slipchenko getting his fourth of the year from Sylvain Turgeon, and the Arrows had a 1-0 lead, and then, hey, let's do something they haven't done in a while, that score a shorthanded goal. Mark Laniel, second of the year, and is only the second shorthanded goal of the year for the Houston Arrows at 15 9 Al Conroy getting the assist, and it is 2-0. The Arrows lead it. Well, a lot of talk about the Houston Oilers football team. Where are they going? Where are they going to be? But to keep things in a positive perspective, is Dan Patrick. This is Positively Patrick. For the last few months, Arrow fans and all sports fans in our town have been talking about the Houston football team moving up north. That's what they call it these days. And some fans are upset. How can we lose our football team? How can we let a little town like Nashville steal a team from us? Well, I think it shows that our political leaders and our citizens, uh, also sports fans, have their priorities in the right place. We're showing that we're a community that's taking a mature approach, a responsible approach, and a common sense approach. We're showing that our priorities are for education, for parks, for libraries, for the police department, for programs for the needy and elderly. If it comes to public funds, a community must place a priority on where those funds are spent. I think Houston is showing themselves as a shining example to other communities across the country for the way we've handled this situation. Now, if Tennessee wants to do it, if Nashville wants to do it, then so be it. And, you know, they've raised their water and sewer rates to help finance this deal. That's the truth, and kind of makes you think that every time they flush, they'll, well, you get the point. Seems kind of appropriate, doesn't it? I'm Dan Patrick, thinking positive.
Thanks, Dan. It's 2 0. The Arrows lead the Indianapolis Ice. When we return, we'll look at highlights from that first period. When we return, this is Saturday Night on Ice. The Arrows leading the Indianapolis Ice and Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenley. And let's just jump right to the highlights as the Arrows really had a tremendous first period. Well, Slutenko gets his fourth of the year and he doesn't do it until Turgeon does a lot of work. Good, end, good end individual effort by Turgeon. He just gives it to Slutenko. I don't think Rasko is expecting that little handoff there and a good shot by Slutenko. Next goal is Laniel. He made a good play to get it down deep and then Conroy feeds him all alone in front. And Rasek will already down on his knees. A good shot by Laniel to put it upstairs. But how about Rob Dobson? He played great, too. Well, he did. You'll see a flurry of saves here. And this, this was even, I think, even before any goals were scored. Dobson made about three great saves. Even though he was on his back, he stood up well on that one. And he, he really kicked some pucks out there. All right, looking quickly at the stats. 11-10, the shots on goal. Both teams, two penalties for four minutes, and both teams 0 for 2 on the power play. Arrows lead it two to nothing, and we will bring you period number two when we return. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Twenty minutes have been played in Market Square Arena. The Arrows leading by a score of two to nothing. Both teams back out on the ice, and head coach Terry Ruskowski, who spends a lot of time conferring with Dave Tippett. Those two have done a tremendous job, uh, despite the fact that the team is 0-6. They have really kept things positive, and, and I think, you know, if they can hold on here, it's just going to be a stepping stone to the steps that this team is going to take. Well, yesterday in practice, uh, Terry Ruskowski said, you know, don't worry about the wor don't worry about the last six games. You can't do anything about them. It's what you do from now on that everybody's going to look at. So that, that's such a good statement because I think I think every every guy on the ice tonight is, is doing that. They're they're taking steps to take care of the future and not really so much worry about what what's been done because you can't do anything about it. And if you joined us late, Terry Ruskowski had some pretty great tips. As speaking of tips, looking at Dave Tippett, but had some great tips uh, for keys to victory. Win, win. And win. I think that pretty well sums it up. I, I think they've gone through the gamut of what is wrong with a hockey team. They all know what they have to do. They know their roles. They know their jobs. Now it's just time to win. The Arrows lead 2-0 and we're underway with a second period. Cipriano right side fires one to Fleer. It goes down low. Sarawick plays it. Sarawick fired it off the boards and it's controlled. Aaron Kimball. Big spank along the boards. You might have heard it. As Ivan Dropa carried across line. We're going to get another delayed penalty on the Houston Arrows. Ice back at center. Darren Kimball at his own blue line, drifting back, back. And finally, Arneal will play the puck, and we will get a penalty on the Houston Arrows. And it will be interference, and the Arrows will be short-handed. Well, that's a hat trick for interference calls on the Arrows tonight. That's three of them. And, you know, the funny thing is we didn't see that in, in Cincinnati. I don't think there was one obstruction call called that, that whole weekend. And now we have the first three calls, interference calls, the Cipriano will go off. Well, we had a call about five seconds at the start of the game, and now we've got one about 25 seconds at the start of the second period, so don't really get anything started. Now the Arrows shorthanded, and they lead this hockey game 2 nothing third power play of the night for Indianapolis. And I think the one thing you'll see is that each rep has his own idea and his own discretion on what what is what. Uh, that's what makes it even tougher is when you get different officials, but I think that goes for any type of call. Some refs let more hooking go than others. Some refs, you know, will let you ram a guy along the boards. Others will call him for boarding or whatever. Kind of tough. Puck is in the arrow zone. Ice on the power play. It was frozen along the wall. And we get a whistle from Bertie DeGrace and a face-off in the left circle of Rob Dobson. Again, Jim Pack, who will join us in the second intermission. As, as we mentioned once uh, before in our previous telecast, he has two Stanley Cup rings, a very coveted uh, Object, I, I tell you, and it's one thing it is to have have pictures of you holding up the Stanley Cup and all those memories. But when you have that ring on your finger, it really tells a story, it brings back some great memories for you. Ivan Tropoff, the face off, a shot blocked. It came out in front, scooped away free, but not out. Steve Dubinsky turns right side down low. It's controlled by Morrow. Ethan Morrow, right side Dubinsky, waiting, waiting. Still looks in front, a stuff shot blocked, another shot blocked. I think Dobson finally got the second shot, fell on top of it, and he will hold on. So Rob Dobson on his derriere, making the save with a minute gone in the second, 2 nothing Houston. Well, Dobson just covered that one up again. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to get a team uh, 
with too much momentum right now. And a good job by the defenseman there as he comes sliding out. I think it was Miles O'Connor came sliding out and just cut that off. And the puck rolled right into the crease, and Dobson was able to cover it up, not allowing any any more wax at it. Face off in the circle to the left side of Dobson. Al Conroy to take the draw against Steve Dubinsky. I don't see Kip Miller out there for. Indy right now Buchanan right side Dubinsky getting set top of the circle rolled it down it's controlled Morrow trying to center takes feathered it off the boards and back down the ice it'll go I think this is the uh, second power play unit for the uh, Indianapolis ice so uh, you probably see them come out and, uh, when the clock hits around a minute left on the penalty Ivan Dropa left side Buchanan across the arrow line pulls up looks for the pass Jake's wrote him off puck hit off the back of the net controlled by Ethan Morrow Morrow, base of the right circle, back to the line for Dropa. Fakes the shot, looks down for Morrow, cutting into the circle, jammed it down for Dubinsky, cycles it down low. Morrow waiting, waiting, back to the line. Buchanan to Dropa, looked it down, and it was tipped away. Back to play it for Indianapolis. Ethan Morrow waiting at the hash marks. Still the puck, back to the point for Buchanan. Half a minute on the power play, a drive, deflected wide. Rebound right side, Dubinsky looks in front. Dubinsky waiting, centered, tipped just wide by Morrow. Behind the net, Morrow jammed it back along the line for Buchanan. The wrist shot is blocked, turn Conroy, he'll clear it down the ice. And McCrory took a shot right in the palm of his hand. He's still shaking that hand. Hopefully he doesn't have any broken fingers because that shot came right off of Buchanan's stick. Puck controlled by Indianapolis. Here they come. It's trailed in by Sherowick. It hit the back of the net. Dobson wanted to play it. Chipped it off the boards for Yo. Can he get it out of the zone? No. It was pounded by Ulanoff. Puck goes along the far wall. Chased down by Jim Pack. Pulled it out of a scrum. He will turn. Roll it over to Miles. O'Connor penalty is over. Teams at five aside. Jim Pack. Off the board, center ice Cipriano trying to find Maurice. Couldn't get it to him. Got it back though. Cipriano rolled it back into the Indianapolis zone. Picked up by Ewan off for some time. No, drilled it off the boards. It came out in front and out to center ice. Houston's got it. Jim Pack back at his own blue line. Past Cipriano trying to roll one ahead along the fire wall and it goes into the Indianapolis zone. Ewan off is there. Long lead pass. Goes to Gauthier. Back to get it as Pack. Gauthier rides him hard into the boards, but Pack came away and then he goes down in a scrum as he was. Ball down all the boards, and the Earls give it to Graham Townsend. Can't clear it. Came out in front for Gauthier, looking for Lecomte to drive. That's blocked, and Townsend will blast it away. To Yo, right back at center for Townsend. Townsend's got a chance. Barely right side. Shoots. Stop. Rebound. And he hit the side of the net. He looked like he was going five hole on Rassico. And the puck came to center. And McIntyre's got a breakaway. Shoots. Dobson. Save. Rebound. Just wide, Rob Dobson, another marvelous save in front. Arneal coming the other way, pulls up right wing boards, feathers it back toward Donnelly, a shot wide of the net. It rests behind the cage, and we're gonna get another penalty. It is going to be on... Mark Laniel. Mark Laniel is gonna get a tripping call, I believe. We'll, we'll sort that up when we come right back. All right, two nothing Houston. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Nothing Houston and Rob Dobson again coming up big as he makes a save on McIntyre who gets free and he's right back on his feet ready for that next save. And that's why he's been doing so well tonight. The next save wasn't necessary because it was cleared out of there. But as you see Dobson right back up onto his feet. 2 nothing. the arrows lead it. How tough is it? How much strength does it take when you go down to get back up? Well, uh, a lot of goalies practice that. They'll they'll fall on the ice, and someone will tap the stick, they'll jump up, and they'll get a shot taken at them. That's uh, that's part of a training uh, technique, and he obviously has worked on that. Ivan Dropa, pass right side, Buchanan, slams it into the arrow zone. This is the fourth power play. we are making fifth power play for Indianapolis. Manlo, right back to the line for Buchanan. At the fourth. Put an extra one down. It's their fourth power play. Morrow slipped it down. Dubinsky looking in front. Gets it back to Ethan Morrow. Let's a shot going on left hand save made by Dobson. Came to Morrow. Slides it down for Manlo. It came to Dubinsky to Ivan Dropa. Right back to the right point. Buchanan wide shoots. And Arneal got a stick on it. But back to the line. Ivan Dropa fakes the shot. Give it back to the line for Buchanan. Slipped it for Manlo. Eric Manlo. 
Looking for the pass, Dubinsky came out in front, but pinballed off some sticks and went out at center. Five minutes gone in the second. Arrows with a 2-0 lead, a minute to go, and the penalty to Laniel, and the ice shoot the puck into the arrow zone. First one there, Gauthier looks in front. Picked up Klimovic, but the arrows came away. The puck, and Arneal romps the center. Scott Arneal. And he'll dump it down, and we're going to get another penalty. This one will be on Houston. Or, I mean, on Indianapolis, rather. A tripping call, and that'll do it for the Indy Power play with 49 seconds remaining in Laniel's penalty. And now two minutes up to Daniel Gauthier. I'll tell you what, one thing I've noticed tonight and it's uh, it's a little different on what Houston's really forcing on the penalty kill, and it's and it's being uh, it's successful so far. They've killed four penalties off, and uh, they're clearing the puck out of the, of the zone really well. Here's the penalty on Gauthier as Pack clears it out, and that was unnecessary, but he gets caught. Face off, circle right side of Andre Rastico. Played last year for a few games with the Phoenix Roadrunners, but spent a lot of his time in Portland of the American Hockey League. I played against him last year. Did you beat him? Uh, I didn't play it yet. I did beat him. But it was a it was a barn burner, let's just say that. <laughs> Puck controlled by Indianapolis, four on four for about 44 seconds. Puck is in the arrow zone, back to get it, Jakes. He'll muscle in behind the net, and up ice will come. Steve Jakes, long lead pass, a bit too far for Conroy. It goes back down into the Indy zone. Yulinov behind the cage. He will skate it up and out of the zone. A pass for James Black too far, and Jakes will play it. Houston will be on the power play in 23 seconds. O'Connor in the corner, left side of Dobson to Sylvie Terjean. Terjean couldn't find the handle, and Kip Miller takes over to James Black. Tipped one for Sarawick. Let's the shot go, and O'Connor gets a skate on that. Miles O'Connor in behind the net for Conroy. Tipped it to the line, not out. Yulinov dancing back at a left point. Looks in front and then dished it back down low. And Houston takes over Jakes. Pass missing Torja as Laniel back out of the ice. And the arrow's on the power play for a minute six. Buchanan touches. And icing is the call. Tell you, one guy I'm looking forward to is Sylvain Turgeon. This is really our first chance to really see him with, you know, he comes in three games and three nights, and, you know, he never really got a chance to get his skates going. Well, I tell you what, one thing I did notice right off the bat about Turgeon is his experience down low behind the net and his, his work ethic down low. Uh, he just, he takes the body, he does all the right things, and he uh, doesn't let himself get caught and doesn't let himself get beat off the boards after he's made a hit. And as you saw in that goal where he fed Slavchenko, he did all the work behind the net, carried the puck to the top of the circle, and Slavchenko did the rest. And he's been uh, he's been a positive sign so far for the Houston Arrows. Picked up his first goal Saturday, October 14th in Cincinnati, a game we had for you here on UPN 20. Arrows on the man advantage for another minute four. That's what remains to Daniel Gauthier, but a good shot by McIntyre and a toe save made by Dobson and then a puck batted midair by McIntyre. I'm not so sure that would have counted. They're not going to call it hit with a high stick, but I thought I maybe he did. I think it was Dubinsky, and I, I believe it would have been uh, would have been called a, a goal because he looked like he batted it from his hips. Yeah. And uh, what, what an excellent save that is because you don't know where that puck's going to go. Good save by Dobson, and what a good shot. point. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a single for sure. Dobson stood up well, and uh, you never can judge those ones. Not when Dobber's playing shortstop, that's not a single. <laughs> Puck control by Houston Laniel. Fired it into the Indy zone, out of the net, Rassico dropped it back. Near side, Laniel held, right point. Trying to scoop it down, but Dubinsky chipped it back down the ice. Dobson out of the net and slows, and Jim Pack will go back to play. From left to right, pass it center off skates of Maurice. Arrow power play down to half a minute, and Maurice takes over at his own blue line. Arrow's kind of running around in circles a little bit here in their own end. As the power play now down to 20 seconds. Jim Pack behind his net. Long lead pass, Lipchenko too far though, and Ethan Morrow cleared, but not away though. It's picked up by McCrory. Scott McCrory, one on right side, Maurice across the line, had it tipped away by Dropa. He will shoot it down the ice, and that'll do it for the Arrow power play. 2-0 Houston, seven minutes gone, second period, Dobson. Quick pass for Miles O'Connor. Hands one up for Freer. Stutter step at center. Across the line with Cipriano and Arneal, but Jeff Sarawick takes over and clear to the line, not out. O'Connor held it in. Finds Freer left side, dropped it, Arneal, the shot block. Puck in front, and Sarawick is there to clear it down the ice. 
This will be icing as O'Connor will chase it down and play it. With 12.32 to go in the second period, Arrows lead it 2-0. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Do a little dance, make a little love. Get down tonight for the Houston Arrows. Join us Saturday Night Disco, November 4th at the Summit, featuring Casey and the Sunshine Band as your intermission entertainment. White polyester suits allowed. Face off to the right of Andre Rastico. Arrows lead 2-0. Puck cleared to the line and all the way down the ice, and the Arrows have to hustle back. It'll be another icing call on Indy as Donnelly goes back to play it. And a face off back into the Indianapolis zone. Well, it's time to give, you know, I'm feeling benevolent again, Mike Greenlee. Let's give something away and let's take it right back to Mark and Lanny, gentlemen. Hi, we're Mark and Lanny from The Morning Buzz, and we take opportunity now, during this timeout, to tell you to call 777-5772 because you, yes, you, are going to win... Uh, tickets to Disney on Ice 4, I believe. Four tickets for Disney on Ice. Very expensive, very cool. Ice, get it? 777-5772. <laughs> now all you have to do is win the tickets and try to find three people to go with you. Good, Good luck. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Come on, be our caller there. 7775772. Puck is cleared to center ice by Houston. Sarawick couldn't control. He has to go back into his own end. Four check by Freer. It came to Kip Miller. Rolled it out at center. Arrows regroup. O'Connor hoists it high in the air. It'll go into the Indianapolis zone. And we're going to get a whistle as the Arrows offside. Set a face off to center with 11.50 to go in the second period. Houston 2, Indy 1. No, nothing. Excuse me. What? Uh, I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> hey, did you see the see how big uh, my eyes? How big my eyes? Where did it come from? <laughs> I'm saying I missed that goal. Well, you know, I, I was gonna say uh, after that last power play, I'd like to see what the arrows are gonna do because after you come off a power play, the whole the momentum changes, and no matter no matter who has the power play, and uh, they've done very well in forechecking and getting in there, so they're showing positive signs still. Face off controlled by the Arrows. Terjean coming in with a backhander. Stop rebound. And I think Rassico kicked that out of there. And away the ice gallop to center. It's McLaren trying to bring the puck in. Steve McLaren had it tipped away. And Conroy comes the other way with Terjean. Across the line, Conroy centered. And it down by McLaren. And the ice have got it. It is cleared Dubinsky, but not out. Held in Slipchenko. Benim wheeling through traffic. And I think he made a wheel too much, and he lost the puck. He had Conroy down low and got dumped. Jakes to Laniel. Quick pass, just missing Terzal. And Steve McLaren goes back. Hard off the boards, turned around by Darren Kimball. Gets it out the center, and Dubinsky in across the arrow line. Dubinsky cuts to the slot center. Mandel right in, backhander, and he hoisted it high and wide of the net. Puck to the near side, Kimball trying to shovel it down low. Laniel has got it. Laniel, Rick White pass for Yo, off skates and sticks and bounding back to the Indy blue line. And now Yo brings it in. Yo right side, cutting right in on goal. And Rassico is there to cover up, and he will hold on. 10.43 to go in the second, 2-0 Houston. Calling all fans, Houston Arrow season ticket packages are on sale now for the 1995-96 season. Avoid the draft. Enlist today, call 627 Arrow. Operators are on duty right now. Join the Arrow Force and get ready for the battle of a lifetime. 627 Arrow. Scott McCrory looking for another goal this season. He play, he's played, played pretty well in the first few games. Hasn't found the mark in the last couple. But uh, you know he has the talent. He likes to likes to put that puck upstairs, and this is the kind of goalie that you'd love to do that on because he loves the butterfly. Puck controlled by Indy, cleared to the line, not out. Held in Yeo, he's in a battle with Ethan Morrow. Puck pounded down low, and Indy takes over. Kip Miller rolled it near side. Donnelly couldn't hold as Buchanan scooped to center. Morrow had to go off skates, but picked up by Miller across the line. Miller cutting in, centered. It went wide of the net. Morrow, base of the left circle. He's run into by McCrory. Battle into the corner. McCrory rolled it near side. Buchanan held at a left point. Now Gunas working hard, and he finally worked it out the center ice. And now we're going to get another penalty. It's going to be on Indianapolis. And you know what? Uh, at first, I, I think he's going to call McCrory for diving. Is that it? Uh, you know what? It, it, it's uh, McCrory skated away, and he think he waved him back. I think he might get both of them. Back. One. I think he's going to get them both for something, but uh, McQuarrie skating away, trying to get a mic down. Let's see if we can pick hooking. it up. 
and two minutes for unsportsmanlike diving. There you go, diving. So you, we got the mic right and there. You know what I was going to say? As soon as he fell, I went, uh, "That's a little. That's a little. I don't know about that one, but he gets by the puck, and uh, I'm not sure. I think it's Buchanan hooks him, and he just falls down on the ice." And it, you're going to have to do better than that if you're going to slip it by the refs. And that's, you know what, that, I'm, I'm not glad that the arrows got called on that, but I'm glad to see that they're still calling that because now with the new obstruction rule, and the tendency is to dive more because you're not going to get those those hooks. Congratulations to Mike Rucker of Dayton, Texas. We're going to see Disney on ice. So, Mike, would you like to take a mic with you? <laughs> Mike Greenley would love to go. You get four tickets. I know you and Amy would love to go. Yeah, I know how to skate. Maybe I'll be in the show. <laughs> You're already in the show with me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> They're better if you laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> Control by Jake. Oh, boy. Somebody somebody call up Oshman. I need a job. Control by Indianapolis. We're going to get a penalty coming up to the ice. Tripping the call. And I think the arrows are going to get their power play. 9.50 to go in the second period. Indianapolis trailing 2 nothing. And Freer took the brunt of that hit. And he's going to get the penalty, huh? I, well, I, 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 I'm not, I, it was so close to the boards on this side that it's, it's kind of hard to see. And Freer takes a bit of the hit, and he also takes the penalty. All right. Whatever. Face off. Will be brought to center ice. And he does get the tripping call. Uh, I'm not sure how he could have tripped somebody when he was laying on the ice. He might have he might have been hit and then tripped Lecompte as he skated away. And Terry, obviously, visibly, it, 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 it's never a secret when uh, Terry's mad. He gets, those <laughs> eyes become very fierce, and that, that jaw becomes very hard, and, and you can tell that he's not happy with that call. You know what's funny is the contrast between Terry, and then you got Dave Tippett. Well, <laughs> Dave Tippett's a, a mild-mannered mild -mannered guy, uh, and he just uh, does his job, and he's not very emotional, but he, he knows hockey. That's why he's on the bench with Terry Skelski. Ivan Dropa skating to center with nine and a half to go in the second period. Chip Miller, right side, getting set. Pulls up for Jeff Sherwick, the drive, and a glove save made by Dobson, snatching that from the jaws of the twine, and he will hold on. Tell you what, it's a little smoky down there. I think it's because Dobson's so hot tonight, picking everything out of the air, and uh, he gets a good look at this one, but it's still a good save as he doesn't give up the rebound. Good shot. Goes through traffic and Dobson. Nothing but Webb with the puck there. Good play by Indianapolis as they beat it to that top man on the umbrella. And he just one times it. All they need to do is get a rebound. Dobson didn't give it to him. Tropa off the draw to Kip Miller, top of the slot. In the arrow zone wide. Shoot! Dobson stopped it. Rebound. Corralled by Arneal and now the ice it'll go. And as I talked about, this is a good power play by Indianapolis. They have a good umbrella prop top. They have options. Here come the ice through neutral. Miller across the line. Miller looking in front, wheeling, dealing, getting set. Miller on the man advantage for Tropa. Back in front. Miller a bit too far. Nice have it. Sarowick, top of the slot. Long shot stopped by Dobson, and he will hold on. I'll tell you what, Mike Greenley, the one thing I'm, I'm pleased about seeing here is a, Dobson's making the first save, but B, if he gives up a rebound more times than not, they're getting cleared, or he's just not giving up a rebound. I tell you what, in, in the three shots he just had on that on the power play so far, two of them he's frozen, and the other one was cleared out by his defenseman. Only once tonight has he had to make more than two saves in a row, and give credit to his defensemen who aren't giving up too much tonight. And uh, that's a good thing because I'm sure Dobson would rather just make one save at the most two rather than, than looking like a <laughs> like a pinball machine in there. Face off left side of Dobson. Top of the puck and the arrows get it to the line, not out. Elvin Sarawick rolled it to Kip Miller, getting set, cutting it down low. Ice on the power play, sends one in there. Dobson stopped that as James Black was draped all over him like a black curtain, and there was Dobson to hold on. There is 38 seconds left in the coincidental minors to Jeff Buchanan and Scott McCrory. 55 seconds left in the Freer minor. James Black has two goals and two assists this year. He tries to make it three with a deflection here as a pucks harmlessly slid through there, but 
It was deflected by Black, and Dobson gets down on his knees, covers the lower part of that net up. And, and like I was going to say, if a goaltender can see the puck, he'll usually stop it. But a guy like Black, big man, he'll get in front of there and try and do some damage in front of the net. Dobson was good in that one, too. Puck cleared by Houston all the way down into the Indianapolis zone. Houston leading this hockey game, 2 to nothing, 45 remaining on the power play. Here come the ice, speeding through center. Dropa across the line, nearly threw it off the linesman. Dubinsky kicked it down. Dropa hash marks right side. Back to the line, Sarawick getting set. Watched by Conroy. Give it to Dropa. Right point, lines it, fakes it, goes down. Sarawick cuts it with a drive, and that was blocked by Gord Donnelly. You may have heard that go right off his pads. Sarawick in the slot. Another drive, and I think he cranked that right off the post. Dropa, right side. Pulls up, lets the shot go, and he hammered it wide of the net. Penalties over to Buchanan and McCrory. Five on four now for Indy for 10 more seconds. Puck, right wing boards. Centered, the shot battle, and Dobson! Wow, a right pad save and a beauty as he kicked it out of there. And down the ice it goes. So Rob Dobson continues to be stellar in the nets as the arrows have killed off another Indianapolis power play. Shakes, turning it center. Klimovic tried to pick it free. And now on is Arneal. Arneal left side, dropped it back. O'Connor the drive. Tipped wide. Freer centered. It hit skates. Puck behind the cage. Tropa tipped it away. And Ivan Tropa will move to center. Right side, Klimovic. Left side, Manlo. Across the line. Ready to go. But Jakes draped over him and picked it away. Now it is Maurice to the near side. Freer bumped by Ulanoff. Couldn't get it out. Andy McIntyre hooks one right in front. Manlo. Oh, he swung and missed. Strike three. Puck to the near corner. It goes to the far side. Chased down by McIntyre. Gently rolled it to the near corner, but Jakes was there. Give it up to Maurice. Can he get it out of there? He'll hook it high in the air, and that'll score the runner from third. Here comes Freer across the line. He is offsides with Scott Arneal. We take time out. Seven minutes to go in the second. Two nothing Houston. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Back at Market Square Arena. Two nothing Houston still, and Dobson keeps it that way. As he's playing very well, a good save here. Quick reflexes on the blocker. And the score stays the same as, as Dobson has seen a lot of action this period so far, and the shots total 21 against him. Arrows control, and watch this, we're at five on five hockey. Somebody pinch me, I must be dreaming. Left point, O'Connor, a drive, rebound in front. Slavchenko nearly tipped it into the short side open net, but I think it was Barbo that came back and made a stellar defensive play. Arrows turn it around. Here comes Turgeon, winding, shooting, and a shoulder save made by Rassico. Puck near boards, McIntyre couldn't clear. Chased down by Kurjan in the near corner, belted by Ulanov, staying after the puck, but Klimovic had it. Clear to the line, not out, O'Connor spanks one down low, but Ulanov has it, and he'll clear to center ice. Here come the Indianapolis ice, Kimball. Ah, saw Klimovic a little off sides, had to regroup at center, and he'll fire it into the Houston zone. Back to get it, it's O'Connor. 6-12 to play in the second period, Houston two, Indy nothing. Slivchenko, the center ice, busting down the right side. He'll move it across the line. Slivchenko tried to make the move. He had it poke checked, and it's turned around by Indianapolis. James Black, give it to Gauthier across the line. Gauthier cutting in, but he dished it into the near corner. Back is Laniel, rolled it near side. Kimball picked it free. He had it frozen along the boards, and Laniel had to come away with it, trying to find some help. He's got help in Jim Pack, who reversed it back to Laniel. Mark Laniel to Kevin Malgunas. Give it to McCrory. Scott McCrory at center. Shoots it into the Indy zone. Back to get it. McLaren for Indy. And Mike Yo shoulder to shoulder. The puck came out in front. James Black went without the biscuit. Finally, it's cleared. Lecomp to center for Black. Drilled it into the Houston zone. And a pad save made by Dobson. Puck came down in front. And Dobson dives on top. He will hold on. And a penalty coming up. So Dobson continues to play well, and we'll see who the penalty is on. You know, I was going to say, Adam, that Houston gave up some shots there early in the period due to the power plays against them. But and how, what I really wanted to see, what I think the test was, was how they reacted afterwards. And when they didn't let anything in, they came back strong and put some pressure on down in the, down deep in the other zone. I think we were at a key point in this hockey game. There's 521 left in the second period in this penalty to Mark Laniel. They're playing with fire. I mean, Indianapolis comes in with a number four rated power play in the IHL. And I'll go there 0 for 5 at this point with power play opportunity number six. Terry Raskowski can't be pleased and he realizes this is a key moment. Well, he also realizes that, that like you said, the power play uh, for Indianapolis is successful at one point if you give anyone enough 
chances. Even even the worst power play in the league, you give them enough chances, they're going to live up to their percentage and, and, and score on you. And that's the last thing that the uh, Arrows want to have right now is a one-goal game. I think a two-goal game would be much better to Terry Raskowski. I think a three-goal game is even better as Buchanan a drive and a right pad save made by Dobson, and Arneal shoots it down. Plays like that, though, you just you got to like that when you watch Dobson, one save and out. Well, and the thing is that the Arrow defensemen are jumping on that puck. They're not just lazing over there. They're jumping on it and clearing it out. Puck brought in on the cross sides. The Arrow's able to clear it, and there will be the offside call with five minutes to go in the second period. 2-0 Houston. Let's take a look at tonight's goaltender comparison. It's sponsored by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut delivers. Rob Dobson, 22 saves. Andre Rastico, 13, and you're realizing and saying, huh, that's a lot of shots from the Indianapolis Ice, but what do you expect? On five power play opportunities, yeah. yes. It's uh, it's going to have to become the other way if they're going to keep being successful in this game. Donnelly, he's back to get it. He's belted by Dubinsky. Matlow in there as well to pick it loose. Matlow for Indianapolis behind the arrow cage. Waiting, waiting. Roll one right side. It came to the line for Ivan Ropa. Having trouble at the blue line. Barely held it in, but he did. Right side, Morrow. Ethan Morrow slipped it down. Madlow right back. Morrow at the hash marks. Trying to slide one down. It was blocked by O'Connor. Good battle in front of the net between Donnelly and Dubinsky. a shot deflected away. And that will slice up over the glass and out of play. 4.28 to go in the second period. Arrows lead at 2-0. A minute seven remaining in the line. Yell minor. Well, you know how they talk about the pit being uh, the, the, the line in football. Well, in hockey, the pit is right in front of that man, Rob Dobson. And I tell you what, <laughs> that's where it all happens. That's where a lot of the tough stuff happens. And you saw Donnelly working over uh, Dubinsky in front there. The shot came from the point, and he just deflected the puck up over into the glass for a stoppage of play. Face off right side of Rob Dobson. The picture of concentration. Even if you paint a thousand pictures, you're not an artist. I don't want to say the rest of it. Puck controlled by Miller. And in behind the net he goes. Under a minute to go in the power play. Miller lines on the right side for Sarawick. Hammered it into the arrow zone. Scoops near side. McCrory trying to boom one out of there. Hit by Gauthier. It came out in front and Jim Pack is there. Sticks it down into the Indy zone. Rassico out of the cage. He was slow. And here come the Indianapolis Ice. Kip Miller. Miller rumping through center. Give it to Gauthier across the line. But that is offside. And I think the Arrows are going to get another penalty. Jakes can't believe it as he <laughs> throws a little tantrum on the ice. He's just, he's actually laughing. And Terry Ruskowski, he probably can't believe it either. What part of the new rule is you can't pull someone off sides and as he did he gets an interference penalty I believe as uh, he pulls black off sides I think and I, I can't remember I think it was Goche was going in on the wing and by going by pulling him off sides he negates Goche's opportunity to score and that's a penalty well he and Bernie DeGrace had their battles last year and they continue to have they continue to have their battles and Steve Jakes looks like he just lost on a game show looks like he lost on Jeopardy Oh, I knew the answer to that. I said I wanted history for a thousand. That's exactly what he's saying. And he'll be history for two minutes as the arrows. Nice transition. You're getting good at this. He's not the best color man in the league for nothing. All right. Taught you well. Lacomp now. Out at center. Fired it into the arrow zone. O'Connor run into by Black. He's trying to move it along. It was Tip Arneal in skates. It's fished out in front, and the arrows will clear. And another penalty. Another penalty to Scott Arneal. And the arrows will continue to be two men down. And you know what? I think DeGrace took everything to heart and took everything literally when he saw that tape on the new rule. Obstruction. He's not allowing anything. Obstruction holding is the call. And you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of talk, you know, between the players about, you know, when when you're on the power play or you're on the penalty kill, there's got to be a little bit of leeway, and that, sure, that's a that that's a call. He can call that, but he also could leave it, and he elects to call it. It, it seems like he's electing to call a lot of those, and Arneal can't believe it himself. Well, now, I, I I didn't mean to be so prophetic, saying this was a key point. I didn't think it would be this key, and Arneal actually. I don't. I know he doesn't want want this penalty, but 
it gets him closer to that that goal, not that goal, but it's a milestone, I should say. He's got 975 penalty minutes and 991 games so far. It gets him closer. 992 to now. Yes, and now it gets him closer to that mark. I, I know, I know that's not a goal or that's a, a milestone he wants to necessarily reach anytime soon. I'm sure glad you used that because Todd Sherrock, the media relations guy, has been hammering me saying we never use his stuff. Well, oh, there we I go. Use, I use it a lot, Todd. So <laughs> don't, don't worry. Just keep writing it. And I'll use it. Yeah. Anything you give us, Sherrocky will use. Here come the ice across the line. Miller, feathers one in front, and it was cleared to center. Now the other penalty starts to Arneal, so we got 120 left to Jakes, and the puck is chipped away. This is a, such a huge point because the arrows can really turn the tide here if they kill this two-man disadvantage off. Puck tipped away, and Conroy sweeps it out at center, and this crowd's starting to get on the ice. Kip Miller circling at center, swiping into the arrow zone, pass right side, cutting in, go Jay center block. And O'Connor will turn, and he will shoot it all the way down the ice. What a great play by Donnelly. Donnelly's having a great game out there, defensively. Very strong, and he's, he chipped the puck away from Gauthier, not allowing him to get to the front of the net. Now Lecomte across the line. He's met by Jim Pack. Looks in front still, five on three for 40 seconds. Puck controlled by Indy. Back to the line, it's Miller. Worked it over Sherwick, the drive! Right on, and Dobson makes the save, and he will hold on. But it's guys in front of him, Mike Greenley, like Gord Donnelly, that do the job. Well, Donnelly's been having a great game, like I said. Here he just drives straight towards the forward and doesn't allow that pass out in front. That would have been a backdoor goal, almost for sure. And then when the defense aren't there, Dobson certainly is, as he makes a good save here and freezes it. Once again, nothing for the ice on that attempt. As Eric Lecomte, who's no stranger, being in the right place at the right time is denied twice there. Looks like that uh, the Indianapolis Ice want to take a timeout. We will do the same. It is 2-0 Houston. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Two nothing Houston and Bob Ferguson called a timeout, trying to get his team squared away. And well, can you figure that out? Well, this guy goes here, that guy goes there, and then everybody's, I don't know. There's a lot of X's and O's there. I think the result is a goal for the Indianapolis Ice, I'm sure. Greener, you're not the czar of the telestrator. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's a quick shot, hit the post twice now. They found iron, still on the power play. Drop up, rolled one over, the drive upstairs and wide, and the penalty down to 20 seconds to Jakes, 46 to Arneal. Buchanan sliced it down low for Manlo. Sends one in the shot. Dobson a glove save, and he will hold on. Now I know what that play was. Go to Dubinsky three times in a row, because that's what they just did. And he ripped one off the post, one wide, and one right into Dobson, Dobson's glove. I think he's trying to find the back door like Cincinnati did in that two-game series this past weekend. Well, he certainly is. And it is a, like I said, it's a third time in a row that Dubinsky's fed. And he chips that one, and Dobson grabs it, holds on. And he freezes that one as he doesn't want any more of Dubinsky's shots. Dubinsky has four goals in his last four games. Of course, the Ice have only played four. This is their fifth. So he's really on the scoreboard this year. Puck to the line, Dropa. Work done by Freer. And it's scooped down low. Arrows chip it to the line, not out. Held in by Dropa. Arrows still down two minutes. A puck came out in front. The shot blocked. Jim Pack out of a rebound. Score! Eric Manlo. And it was after the two-man advantage had expired, so I think that should do it for the power play. But the ice on the board, and it's now 2-1 in favor of Houston. You know, I don't know whether DeGrace was slow on the whistle there or not, but uh, it seemed like Dobson had it, and then they poked at it. It seemed to jump over top of Dobson, and then roll into the net. Maybe it was helped in by Manlow, but a good shot here. And Dobson goes down a little early. I think he was expecting a deflection. But as he tries to cover it right there, the puck's chipped over, and the puck eventually ends up in the net. I don't know if Manlo got his stick on it or not. I think they are giving him credit for it, but, but Dobson thinks he's gonna get an deflection here, but it's not, and Pack gets his feet on it, and actually, no, Dobson didn't have it. But uh, the result is a goal for the ice. And I tell you what, you give a team enough offense, given offensive opportunities, they're gonna score. I mean, Dobson's been unbelievable so far. He's had to make 27 saves already in this game. You wanna give your goalie 27 saves in the whole game. And it's not even the end of the second period yet. That's one thing. You can call upon your goalie to make some big saves, and he has. 
Well, it wasn't the prettiest of goals, but they can't all be gems. It is now 2-1, and Kip Miller comes right back, cutting right in on goal, had it tipped away, and Terzal skates to center. Sylvain Terzal speeding down the line, hits it with McCrory, spun it down low, and it's picked up by Ivan Dropa. A minute and a half to go in the period, and the ice on the board. It's 2-1 Houston. Manlo tipped it Morrow across the line. They've got some room to wheel behind the net. Chipped it back. Cuts out in front, but Terzal came back to chip it away. A power play goal to Eric Manlow, which draws it within one, and here's a drop pass. Manlow shooting, and Dobson made the save. Buchanan, a long drive is blocked. It came out in front, and Dobson will cover up with 61 seconds to go in the second. And the arrows find themselves a little back on their heels, and you can't jump on the arrows here when you have been shorthanded for about half the period. Well, certainly, and they're really getting nailed on that rule, uh, that obstruction rule, but. But you know what? It's it's going to be have, have to be an adjustment to make. Every team has to make an adjustment when they're playing another team, when they get a different ref, and when they work play in a different building. And uh, as you saw, it, the Indianapolis coach drawing up that play, he had to change his plans when he found that he couldn't penetrate the defense of the arrows. So everyone has to change. Everyone has to move things around a bit. And so the arrows are going to have to get used to this ref before the third period starts because they, they can't get away with what they've been doing. No, not at all. And they need some goals. And looking to try and get one here. Face-off controlled by Houston. Steve Jakes behind the net to Scott McCrory. Banks it off the boards, and here's Mark Freer to center. Across the line with Arneal. Centered one. Arneal right in, a sharp angle shot wide. Freer picks it up in the corner to give it to Scott McCrory. A centering pass is blocked, though. And Ulanoff cuts behind his net. So Scott McCrory now reunited with his original line at the start of the year, Mark Freer, Scott Arneal. Let's see what they can do. I'm, I'm sure they'll be glad to be back together, because they were successful when they were together. Jim Pack cleared to center, back to the ice blue line. Ulanoff plays it. Oh, another penalty. And this one will be on Indianapolis. It will be hooking. Obstruction ho hooking. Obstruction hooking. Obstruction hooking in that. And that's obviously the difference between difference between a, a penalty and an obstruction penalty is the, like a hooking penalty. You hook the person down, you might have the puck. But an obstruction penalty, of course, is when you negate the player's opportunity to get to the puck or get to the play. And you're going to hear a lot of that, I think. Arrows. Get 27 seconds of it in the second period, the rest in the third. Dubinsky gets in front of Freer and doesn't allow him to forecheck. And by doing that, he allows Indianapolis, or the Indianapolis defenseman to feed a far winger. And Dubinsky doesn't like the rule either. I'll tell you, I am really mixed emotionally on this rule. I mean, I, if it opened up the game, that's one thing, but it's grind, grounded right to a halt with all the penalties. Puck picked up by Houston, but they had to regroup at center ice. 13 seconds left in the period as a high shot goes in. And it's controlled by Indianapolis and cleared with seven seconds to go. And here's a stat that will rock your world unofficially. The Arrows, four shots on goal, and they all came in the first eh, three, four, five minutes of that second period. Well, there's no doubt that Rascal's had a rest this period. He hasn't had to face very much. And on the other oh, end of the spectrum, we've got Dobson, who's had to stand on his head. And... Uh, Brazico will have to be ready because that's one of the toughest things a goaltender has to face is a lot of shots, then no shots, and then potentially a lot more shots. Buck goes into the Indy zone. Two seconds left. Horn sounds, and that is the second period. So we have played 40 minutes of action from Market Square Arena. The Arrows lead 2-1. A minute 33 remains in the Dubinsky Minor. And when we return, we hope to be chatting with Jim Pack. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to Market Square Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlee. 2-1 hockey game. The Arrows leading the Indianapolis Ice. and. Uh, well, the Arrows, I think uh, the best sound that they could have heard at the end of that period was the horn going off after facing a lot of shots and a lot of power plays from Indianapolis. They did face a lot of shots, but I tell you what, it wasn't because they weren't playing well. It was because all the power plays against them. I'm still optimistic because they showed a lot of a good play, great penalty killing that period. So it, it, a lot of shots weren't a result of them not playing well. You know, the thing was, when we started the first period, the Arrows got the momentum because they had a power play, what, five seconds into the hockey game. That's what got their momentum.
momentum going in the first. Then Indianapolis gets a power play to start the second period, and they get the momentum that carries them right on through. Arrows to start the third period are going to have, a, well, about a minute and a half to work with uh, on a power play. That's a positive sign. And the third period's a great period to have the momentum going into because it, it obviously closes off the game. The Arrows have faced a lot of shots in this period. Let's hope they can turn the tables on Andre Rasico because he hasn't faced very many shots. He might be cold physically, but maybe mentally as well. I understand Jim Pack is waiting for us downstairs. Jim, are you surprised by all these penalties in the second period? Well, sure I am because, uh, you know, in the first period we had there uh, not too many penalties. In the second period, uh, the ref's calling it real tight. Uh, I guess we're getting a little anxious out there. Jim, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. Did Terry change the penalty killing or anything like that? Because I noticed that the defensemen are forcing a lot more, and even the forwards as well. Well, you know, it, that, that's our game plan to, uh, you know, get one guy forcing, and then the whole box will uh, will force also. And, uh, you know, we're having a good situation right now where, where we're allowed to force. You and I were sitting down at dinner the other night, and you told a great story. I, I want to know, how in the world does someone from South Korea, or just from Korea, get to play hockey? How, tell me the story again. Well... I was basically raised in Canada, though. I came over when I was one, and and as everyone knows, you all, everyone plays hockey in Canada. So, that, you know, that's basically how I got started. Uh, Saturday night hockey, uh, you know, on the streets, everywhere. And also, then, of course, the adjustment. You've won two Stanley Cups with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Talk about a little bit of the leadership you bring down. I mean, what's the difference from playing from Pittsburgh and now coming to the Arrows? Well, you know, a hockey team's a hockey team. You know, you have uh, 20 guys, and... And everyone's trying to win, and and everything's the same, basically. Uh, just we don't have a Mario Lemieux, so. But uh, you know, the, the hockey team's a hockey team, and everyone's thriving for the same goal and to win the championship. All right, we may, may not have a Lemieux, but we do have a Scott O'Neill and a Mark Fair. Thanks for your time, Jimmy. Thank you. All right, defenseman Jim Pack joining us. It's 2-1. The Arrows lead it in the second period intermission, and we'll be right back. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. 2-1, Arrows lead it here at Market Square Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And, oh, man, you know, I feel tired just watching Rob Dobson. Well, he's made a lot of saves. He's had 30 shots in the first two periods. And that, that's, a, that's a lot of shots, like I said to you earlier. Those, that's how many shots you want to face in the whole game, not in just two periods. Let's take you back to the goals. Back in the first period, the Arrows got on the board first. Vadim Slivchenko, fourth of the year at 10-19. Sylvain Turgeon getting the assist. Arrows led it 1-0. They made it 2-0. As Mark Laniel, shorthanded second goal of the year at 15-09 of the first. Al Conroy getting the only assist, and the Arrows led it 2-0. But we move to the second period, and the power play. Yes, lots of them. Eric Manlo at 18-15, a power play tally from Steve Dubinsky and Ethan Morrow. And the ice on the board, and now trail it by a score of 2-1. to 2-1, the Arrows leading the Indianapolis Ice back inside Market Square Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And before we look at the highlights, I guess we need to prep everybody on what they're about to know about. And there were a lot of penalties. The obstruction penalty really reared its ugly head in that period. Well, it certainly did. I mean, it, that, that's a penalty. You know, like you said, it's going to be a transition period for everyone. You're going to get different, different referees that are going to make a different call. It's all discretionary. Tonight, they're calling it a lot. And the arrow penalty killing has done a very good job. It, it, it's killed off most of the penalties that it's faced, except one, and it resulted in a Indianapolis goal as we take a look at it. And it would be Eric Manlow that would start it off for Indy. Well, a good shot from the point. And one thing, you see Dobson going down early here. He thinks he's going to get a deflection. But with a lot of time on the play, the puck's chipped out in front, and Mantle, all he has to do is poke it into the open net. Almost looks like Dobson helped it in, but Dobson has really helped his cause this evening. Well, he certainly had. He's, he's played very well. He's made a lot of good saves. Here, Dubinsky gets a shot out in the slot, and he fires one. Dobson looking around the people to get the puck this time, and uh, doing a good job is freezing the puck. He's not giving up a lot of rebounds. The ones he's giving up are being, you know, cleared out by his defensemen. And he continues to play well. And one of the things we talked about is not only was he making the first save, but he was controlling the rebounds. That's right. You kick the rebound into the corner. That means that the opposing team has to gather the puck up and do it all over again. And also the defensemen are clearing it down the ice, which negates the whole play altogether. So good job by the defense, but especially by Rob Dobson. Let's take a look at those second period stats. And they are brought to you by Whataburger. 20 shots on goal for the Indianapolis ice to just four shots. But what do you expect when you give up seven penalties for 14 minutes? 
The arrows Rob Dobson 19 saves on 20 shots all four shots stopped by Andre Rastico. The Indianapolis Ice had three penalties for six minutes. Indianapolis went one for four on the power play and Houston going 0 for two. And again the stats brought to you by Whataburger. Hey what's you waiting for. Well what we're waiting for is the start of the third period. If you're Terry Ruskowski what do you tell your troops in regards to maybe curtailing the obstruction. Well. You tell you tell them to stop doing it because these guys know what the penalty is all about. You also tell them, look, when we were playing five on five in the first period, we dominated. Let's stay away from the obstruction penalty and we'll dominate again. It seems to me a little cliche comes to mind. You used it in the Cincinnati game. I'd like to resurrect it here this evening. 20 miles for 20 smiles. That certainly is right. 20 miles for 20 smiles. The guys are sitting in the dressing room right now. Hopefully they're not panicking. I don't think they are. I think they have went through that already once and they've learned from it. And now they're going to play and try and win this game. Hey, the golf shirts are working, folks. So far, so good. 2-1, the arrows lead it. We'll bring you the third period when we return. It's a 2-1 hockey game. The arrows leading the Indianapolis ice. And the arrows are 20 minutes away from picking up win number one on the year and it's been a very inspiring hockey game for Houston this evening. Well it certainly has uh, except those except that second period where they got into penalty trouble. Uh, it's been a very good game and he, even as I said even as they were in the penalty trouble they played very well. They got some good work on their penalty kill and Rob Dobson really helped kick the puck out and do his job in the net. You know when a team is 0 and 6 a lot of times you think it might be tough to motivate or in some ways maybe it's easy because they know what they have to do and I asked Dave Tippett before tonight's game to talk about the toughness in motivating his hockey club. Well it's uh, definitely different ends of the coaching spectrum there's always uh, the teaching and uh, motivation is a big part of it uh, you know we're in a tough situation now where Winning or success uh, breeds enthusiasm, and uh, right now we don't have a lot of enthusiasm around here. So you have to address those problems. You have to keep everybody uh, as emotionally fit as you can, and uh, we've been trying to do that. We've had a couple of great practices here, and uh, very upbeat. And uh, hopefully we come out and, and get out of this bit of a doldrum we're in and, uh, and get some wins. Thanks, Timsey. And uh, I'll tell you what, motivating his troops, he, he and Terry are as good as any coach in the IHL and motivating and getting the best out of their guys and you know Dave Tippett I asked him right after that I asked him about has ethic work ethic been a problem he said no that's the amazing thing we're all in six but it hasn't really been work ethic and I tell you what if you'd have seen the last two practices I mean the one yesterday and then the pregame skate today you'd have just you would have looked and you'd have said hey that team must be six and oh not oh and six because everyone's upbeat working hard skating well and doing the right things I think they just ran into a certain uh, a problem every game I mean, every time they they, they climb the ladder they fall back down and uh, tonight I think they're they're going to keep climbing as they they've been very upbeat and they practice very well face off at center ice arrows on the power play for a minute 32 that is what remains to Dubinsky arrows control at Laniel works it through neutral ice a pass to Arneal feathers one to Freer it was stripped away by Buchanan and it was chipped drove by it came out in front and Arneal trying to Almost used his stick upside down to redirect it, almost got it effectively, but it's O'Connor. Quick pass, Arneal sends to Freer, it was behind him, and the ice trying to get it out of there cannot. It's spun down low, hard for Townsend, give it to Freer. He centered it, but it's batted up high in the air. Dive for that greener, it's almost up here, and play whistle down. Well, uh, you said Arneal tried to use that, use his stick as a pitchfork, and he just pokes the puck, and he tries to shovel it in the net, but he was, he was hit by two Indianapolis defensemen. The puck rolls harmlessly into the corner, and then it was bit across the eight and chipped out, out of the play. So a face off to the right side of Andre Rasico. We played 33 seconds and no obstruction penalties. You Life like, is good. You like saying that, don't you? Well, yeah, because I think it, you're more frustrated with than the players. Are. Well, I am because I really want to see this game do well. I want to see it speed up, but it really does grind to a halt when you're shorthanded for so much. And I am not getting on the officials with this. I'm just saying that's the call. He's made the call. He's been consistent. I will give Bernie de Grace the credit on that. He has been consistent with the call. The question is, is when does the call become a detriment to the game as opposed to maybe a help? Laniel left point. 
Get it down to Arneal at the hash marks, and here's another penalty coming up to the Indianapolis Ice. Delayed calls. It came out in front. Rastico stopped it, and play will be halted. So a minute gone in the third, and now the Arrows will get a two-man advantage for 32 seconds as Graham Townsend was roughed up a little bit in front, and it will be Jeff Sarawick going to the box. And you know what? I, I'm glad you did say that because Bernie DeGrace has been consistent tonight. He's done a very good job in that regard. Uh, what you hate to see is a ref that will call something at one end and not call something at the other end. But if you watch the front of the net, Townsend just gets dumped. And uh, that, uh, I believe the call came before that. That wasn't really the call, but the call came before that. He was dumped in front, and then that was on the delayed penalty as Townsend, a hard man to move from in front of the net, and he's going to cause problems for people. I mean, he's 230 pounds. <laughs> Would you want to push him around? Ah, uh, easy. <laughs> Jeff Sarowick did, he gets a tripping penalty. Face off to the right side of Andre Rasico. Freer, Arneal and Conroy with Laniel and O'Connor. Laniel starts the five on three, roll the right side for Miles O'Connor, quick pass for Arneal at the hash marks. Right side getting set. Arneal waiting, slipped it down. Freer center and hit the side of the, I don't think Conroy expected it to change direction. Then Conroy gets a little two-hander to the back of the neck and down he goes. Well, Evan Dropa stuck his stick across the crease. He almost stuck it in the net himself, but it went wide and Conroy couldn't get his stick Two-man advantage down to eight seconds. Laniel across the line. Steers went over to the right side a bit too far. And Tropa cleared it to the line. Not a, well, it is out. But Steve Dubinsky back out of the ice, and it's a five-on-four power play for Houston. Conroy spins it back to Miles O'Connor. Give it to Laniel at center ice. Quick pass for Conroy, streaking across the line. He had it chipped away, and it's back out at center. Here come the ice, shorthanded. Morrow across the line with a drive, and a glove save made by Dobson. Miles O'Connor hard off the boards, but the arrow's making changes. Ooh, that was nearly too many men on the ice. Play going on, Laniel. His pass missed uh, Arneal, and this power play quickly diminishing as it's down to 53 seconds. Jim Pack behind the cage, hits the brakes, chipped it back behind the net for Jakes, and he'll move it right back to Jimmy Pack. Well, he couldn't, it was tipped away by Goche. now he gives the pack. Quick pass, McCrory skating through the neutral zone. McCrory moves it in, Terjaw, a shot, score! Sylvain Terjaw with a knuckleball upstairs right over the left shoulder of Andre Rasico. Power play, goal, and the Arrows lead it 3-1. to one. You know, one of the best things that could have happened to the Arrows is to have play against, uh, to play against the goalie they did last game, and that is Freddie Shabbat. Very similar style to Andre Rasico, and Rasico dropping to his knees on quite a few shots, and a good play by McCrory to chip the puck up to a streaking Turgeon, and Turgeon just winds up and puts it upstairs. I mean, what a shot this was. I'm telling you what, I, I, don't, I don't know. It wouldn't have mattered, I don't think, whether uh, Rasico was standing on his head or standing up or laying down. That, that was a well-played shot, and he finds a twine, and I tell you what, that's exactly what the arrows needed. Oh, like Vivaldi on the violin, Terjean with some string music in the third, and it's 3-1 Houston. Power play goal for Sylvain, and he's got himself a goal and an assist. Black in the arrow zone. It's picked up by Jake. Banked it back for Jimmy Pack. And Yo gives to McCrory. Right back to Yo. Left side. Jammed away by Sarawick and into the arrow end. Jakes turns around, moves it up. Jakes across the line. Jakes looking for the pass instead. Dumps it into the far corner. It's picked up now. Good centered in front this shot. And it hits skates as McCrory let the backhander fly. Ice banging out at center. It will go into the arrow zone, and Miles O'Connor will chase. Watched by Gauthier. He will get it to the line and out. O'Connor skating it up and out of his zone. Find it to the Indianapolis blue line. Ice cleared out at center ice. Manlow banking off the boards near side. Lecomp. Lecomp cutting in with a shot. And knocks it with the glove save. And it will just scoot wide of the net. Donnelly gives it up to Malgunas. And now Conroy. Now Conroy, left wing, pooms one into the Indy zone. It caroms to Iman Dropa. Back in his own zone, and he will play peekaboo behind the net with Slipchenko. Dropa cuts one to the left side. Buchanan chipped one out at center. Arrows nub it free, and it's back at neutral ice. 16-12 to go in the third in a 3-1 hockey game. Arrows lead it. Donald rolled one right side for Slipchenko. Moves to center. Slipchenko, a, a pass for Conroy, hits the line to Turgeon. Sylvain Turgeon, barely in behind the net. Tropa gives him a ride into the boards. 
Kip Miller cleared it out to Ethan Morrow. Sends it out at center for Manlow. Manlow trying to hit the line. Poke check by Jakes, but dumped back in by Dropa. Glove by Dobson, and he will leave it for the first man back line yell. Quick pass, Turgeon, as the ice making changes. Turgeon drills it into the Indianapolis zone. Rastico stops behind the net, and it's controlled by Ulanov. Igor Ulanov got it out at center, picked up by Jakes, returned it right back to Arneal, looking for Slipchenko. He tipped it back, but it's turned around by Indianapolis. Bring it out at center ice. Sarawick hammered it into the arrow zone. Ice need two of them, they're down 3 1. Freer moves one out at center, and Slipchenko, if he hustled, could have had a break with the puck a bit too far, but Slivy chased it down, chipped it back behind the net. Arneal pursues in the corner. He's bumped by Sarawick. Freer muscling in there, digs it out, lost it. Dubinsky turns, clears, wins it out at center ice. Yield it off at neutral, across the line, looking for Darren Kimball. He centered! Oh, and just wide! Great play between Yulinoff and Darren Kimball. Puck came out in front. McIntyre stuff shot wide as Freer on his case. And Freer will pop it away. Mark Freer bangs one out at center and Buchanan slows it center circle. Four check by Townsend who tipped it away. Got it into the Indy zone. Rassico out of the cage. He'll give to Yulinoff. Quick pass to center for Kimball. He's got a couple of guys to beat and he will just dump it in. 14-34 to go in the third. 3-1 hockey game. This game has opened up a little bit. I don't know if that helps or hurts the arrows. Well, I think it, it, it could hurt them if they let too many breakdowns happen, but I think they're doing well, as they're doing right now, as they're keeping the puck out of the zone and dumping it in when they get over the red line. Yeah, right now, I think it's definitely helping Houston, and that means timeout. 3-1, arrows lead it. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. We'll be right back. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low. Get now. You fly now, you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why for the fun of it. Why don't you come along with us? Because we got a lot of things to do now. You really now. now, you really should fly. And you'll have fun, 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 fun. Southwest on a fun fare today. Check the house at night. You'll know when you put the kids to bed. With the Nighthawk carbon monoxide detector, you'll always know exactly how much carbon monoxide is in your home. Only Nighthawk has an alarm and a constant digital readout for the earliest possible warning if levels start to rise. Insist on a Nighthawk carbon monoxide detector because what you don't know can hurt you. You think this is fun? Hey, our next telecast is November 11th at 7 o'clock as the Arrows take on the Milwaukee Admirals from Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Again, game time at 7 o'clock. You can catch the game right here on UPN 20 and, of course, all the action heard live on Super Talk Radio KPRC. 14.21 to go in the third. 3-1 Houston, face off at center. And McCrory. Wins the draw. Here's Jim Pack, left side. Hammers it right on. Rassico, and stick save. Puck along the Dashers. James Black in a battle with Scott McCrory. McCrory scooped it away for Kevin Malgunas. Malgunas fighting for a goal, giving a pretty rough ride. Well, he just goes hard, hard, hard. He just, I don't think he knows backwards or sideways. He just goes forward. It's like one of my cars that don't work. Puck was centered by Lecomte, and it's chipped down, and Scott McCrory's got it. McCrory hangs it out at center, and he was bang pretty hard, and the puck down, and Rastico plays it. Over to the left side, and it was cleared at center by Steve McLaren. The ice bring it in, James Black, you try to hold it, Dobson, shuffling the pads, made a right pad save. LeCompte, base in the right circle. Eric LeCompte trying to jam it down as they battled along the boards. It came near side, LeCompte trying to jam it along and battle for it as Bouchain was dumped. Takes the clear to Yo, and down the ice it'll go. Dropa back to his own blue line as Barbo is there, and it goes right back in to the arrow end. Steve Jakes from right to left. Pass at center for Slivchenko. Slivy across the line with Yo, hands it back. Conway wide, shoots Rasico the save, and then he will drop it, and Barbo will play it. Quick pass to Manlo, but Terjean turned it away. Terjean lost it, and it's brought in. Looked offside. Play going on. Miller stood up in front. Jake shoveled it to center. 
What a difference a game makes. The first six games, the Arrows had all kinds of trouble trying to clear it. They're not having as much trouble on it as Moro will drive. And Jake's got it in front of that. And then he will cover up and he will hold on. 12.37 to go, 3-1 Houston. This is Saturday night on ice. They won Houston, and the reason why Houston is winning this game so far is all the sacrifices at both ends of the ice. Here you see Steve Jakes sacrificing his body, blocking the shot, and that's one of the big reasons right there. So the Arrows lead it 3-1, and a face-off is, tell you, the Arrows, Steve Jakes, he will sacrifice his body at any time. He's that kind of player, and uh, that's one of the toughest things, you know, to get the bravery to go down and do that, but uh, Steve Jakes, not afraid of that, and that is not where that black eye came from. He got that, I think, from mouthing off from me yesterday. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna tell him he said that. <laughs> he, it'll, it'll get back to him, I know. Just kidding, Jake. He has a shot right on and a stick save made by Dobson. I owe him that one just from last year. A little gag he played on me. Laniel chipped it off the boards. And Sarawak trying to get it in there. Sarawak with a quick shot, Dobson stopped it. Huckness in front the arrows come away. Laniel steers it out in front, and Arneal will get it out. Oh, and Arneal was just booted by Yulinov. Pounded into next Tuesday. Wow, big hit by Yulinov. But Arneal jumped right back up and stays out there. Oh, Arneal will have that radar vision, I think, and get the number of that Mack truck. But what a hit by Yulinov. And then Arnie sized him up and got the elbow up on him. Play going on. Told you he has that radar vision. Hawk is in the Indianapolis zone. Sarawak at center. Arnie takes a little poke at him, and the puck goes in, and Arneal will come off from the line change. A little cut. That's one, shift there. That's one thing I like about Arneal is he has a little bit of mean streak in him. You're not going to take any crap from anyone. And that's good to see someone with his talent able to take care of themselves like that. This game has had its moments when it's been physical. It, it's been sporadic, but boy, when it has been physical, it has really picked up. And it's been a good game. Hockey's at center. Neal left side, dumped it into the Indianapolis zone. Back is Yulinov, and now Buda shoulders him into the boards. Hey, Yulinov's a tough customer. He is. He's a big man, so guys are going to go after him, and he's throwing his weight around as well. Here come the ice. McIntyre across the line. Shoots. Dobson, glove save, and he will hold on. 10.57 to go in the third. 3-1 hockey game, and folks, be a part of the IHL 1996 All-Star Weekend. Friday, January the 12th, the Houston Arrows are hosting an All-Star Charity Golf Tournament benefiting the Houston Arrows Charities. You'll be playing with members of the 1980 U.S. Olympic Gold Medal Hockey Team, 1974-75 Houston Arrows Championship Team, and the 1996 IHL All-Star Team. For more information, please call the Houston Arrows at 621-2842, and Rob Dobson, He'll be out there, I'm sure, and he's been out there tonight stopping everything in his way. Well, he calmly handles this one as he freezes it. And uh, never a bad play for a goaltender to freeze the puck every once in a while and give his team a rest. Off the faceoff, puck control, Laniel. And here comes Terjean to center, and a pass hit the skates of Slavchenko. Darren Kimball regroups at center, hands it back to Dropa. Left side, Buchanan for Trek Slipchenko, and now Kimball's in there, but Rob Dobson, just as good as anybody in the IHL, playing the puck with his stick. Greener, how are you with a stick? I'm not too bad, you know, and, and, and with those new rules especially, playing the puck is going to be very big for goaltenders because they're going to have to help their defensemen who are getting basically hammered by the forechecking forwards. Ice bringing it into Arrow Territory, Dobson out of the net. We get a whistle. I think Indy was offsides. Face off brought to center. 10-19 to go in the third. Arrows lead at 3-1. The shots, though, 37 to 18 in favor of Indianapolis. So the shot totals are still absorbently high. And you know, I was looking at numbers for Troy Gamble just in case he was to play tonight. Troy Gamble in his last four games has faced 128 say, or he's fa uh, faced more than that. He's stopped 128 shots. There's Gams. Have some water. Gams also, that's an average of 32 shots. And even though in two of the games he's given up eight goals, he's been unbelievable. He has. He's played very well, and uh, his stats don't give him any credit, I can tell you that much. But uh, he'll be back, and uh, he'll be back, and, he's, and he'll be back playing well, as he as always has been, and as he has been, especially this season. 
You'll see him back playing well as, as Dobson's playing well. That's that's one thing we talked about. Terry Ruskowski, I'm sure, is happy to have the problem of both goalies playing well. Roscoe's got another problem. That man there, Dobson, has played well enough if the Arrows win. Yeah, but who does he go with on Friday? Because Troy Gamble, that guy, has been unbelievable against Detroit. Well, if he wins, I bet you'll see him back. Pocket center, and the Arrows have it. Arneal jammed one in across the line, and it's picked up by Houston. Townsend shoots, glove save by Rastico, and then he had to kind of bobble it for just a second. You know, to answer your previous question there, I'll go back to the old uh, Bull Durham movie where uh, I can't use the same words they use, but basically they say do not mess with a winning streak. Yes. And if, uh, if Dobson were able to win this game, I think you'd see him come back on Friday. And if he won that, you never know. He maybe he'd play on Sunday against Atlanta. I mean, you can't mess around with something like a winning streak. Does one game constitute a streak? It does for them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. 3-1 Houston, 9.44 to go. And it's controlled by Houston at center, Scott Arneal. You know, he doesn't have a point in this game, but he's played terrific. He has done, as you said. Arneal's the kind of guy, he may never score a point in a game, but he can be a big dominant factor because he's such a smart guy, and he has had a, a very heady game. And now the pass, Arneal the shot. And Arasico got a right pad on it, but oh, Arnie just about made me a hero there as he cut right in with a shot. Lock clear to center. And it's turned around by Indianapolis. It is Gauthier across the line, looking in front, spins it down LeCompte. LeCompte watched by Donnelly. LeCompte still the puck. LeCompte teetering the blue line. Oh, I thought he brought it out. They say no, the arrows go to center. Here's Malkunas across the line. Shoot! Ooh, Rassico! Oh, oh, what a left pad save. And he will hold on, and we will take timeout. Under nine to go in the third. Arrows by two. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. We'll be right back. Three to one, Houston, and Arneal almost gets his first goal of this game as he's fed out front, but Rassico, in that patented butterfly style, gets a piece of it. And Scott Arneal looking for a lot of milestones, not just not just a penalty one. He's looking for his thousands of game as well, I believe. You know, the Arrows' next action will be Friday against the Detroit Vipers. We invite you to come on out to the summit and check it out. Can't wait to get back home. Little home cooking at the summit. And the Arrows, 43 away if the score remains the same. Trying to get rid of that 0-6 slate. As one of the arrows down on top of the puck, that's Scott McCrory. Now we can take a look at our UPN calendar. Next telecast is the 11th of November. Just two games to speak of in November. That is the 11th against the Milwaukee Admirals. On the 25th, we get a look at Orlando Arena. I wonder if Shaquille O'Neal will play. Nah, I doubt it, but we'll get to see the Orlando Solar Bears. That game will be at 6.30. And of course, all games can be heard on Super Talk Radio 950 KPRC. And join us right here on UPN 20. Miles O'Connor hammered it into the Indianapolis zone. Yulinov goes back. And he'll bang one along the boards, and Kip Miller is there. Miller in his own end. Hands it right back to Yulinov. Clear to the line, not out. Held in by Conroy. Yulinov again behind the net. Down to 8.15 to go. Yulinov, four check by Maurice. Ice at center. Kip Miller steers one ahead. Dropa had his stick lifted, but he got it in. But that's offside. He's bring a face off back to center ice. 3-1 Houston, 8.06 to go. And Ivan Dropa. Ivan has been a uh, pretty stalwart guy as he is in his. Uh, Second season with the Indianapolis Ice. Top scoring defenseman for Indianapolis last year with five goals, 28 assists for 33 points. And I'll tell you, he's seen a lot of ice tonight. Well, he's played only three games so far, not including this one, and he has four assists so far in, the, in those three games. So you're right, he does, he does get the totals up. Puck is in the arrow end, and it's Laniel. Gives to Freer. And here's Scott Arneal, tipped away by Dubinsky. Here comes Dubinsky across the line, and he'll shoot it into the far corner. Donnelly goes back to play it. Donnelly pulls up, chipped it up the boards to the line, not out. Held in by Buchanan, slipped it back down Klimovich, lost an edge, crashed and burned along the boards, and Freer cleared it. Buchanan shoveled one ahead. Arrows played it, which negated the hand pass. Puck sliding into the arrow zone. Laniel wraps one out at center. Laniel's got a shorthanded goal in this hockey game. 
Dropa across the line. Shoots it into the Houston zone. Dobson out of the net. And it's Graham Townsend that will play it. Townsend rolled one into the Indianapolis zone. Back to get it, Sarawick. And he's run into by Arneal. Townsend left side. Looks along the boards. Was popped away by Klimovich. Cleared the line on out. Townsend held it in. Banked it over to Mark Freer. Looking for Arneal, but it comes to Townsend. A rolling puck he had jabbed away. This has been a better game for Graham Townsend. He has. He's forced very well tonight. That's the things they've been looking for the big guy. And wreaked a lot of havoc in front as Klimovich. Face of the right circle from Black. Trying to lob one down. It came for Klimovich. Trying to stick one in front. The shot block. And McCrory got in front of that one. I can't believe, I can't remember the last time I saw so many arrows getting in front of shots. I was going to say, I wish I was counting those tonight. There's been at least four or five good block shots at crucial times. Jakes. Cleared one over to Malgunas. McCrory steers it out at center. 6.33 to go in the third. Arrows 3-1. Dropas pass intercepted by McCrory. Worked one ahead. Malgunas for Yo across the line. No needing help, though, and he'll just dump it in deep. Behind the net. After it was Malgunas, he was given a rough ride into the boards. But Lecomte clear into center. James Black rolled it to the arrow blue line. Turned around by O'Connor. And now Conway for Yo, who had a breakaway, and it rolled off his stick. Oh, a tough break for Mike Yo as Conroy feathered him a beauty. Indianapolis clears at center. Lacomp bumped by Conroy. And the rookie is taken out of the play. And the ice have to go back to play it. Barbo cleared to the line on out. Drove the the near side. And Laniel is there. Hooks it into the Indianapolis zone. 5.50 to go in the third. Arrows with a two-blot lead. Dropa snapped the pass to center ice for Lacomp. Barely across the line. The top finding shooting Dobson blocker saying, Oh, and Laniel steered it in behind the net. O'Connor rolls one right side as Maurice tipped one ahead for Turgeon. Sylvain Turgeon through the neutral zone. Had it poke check though by Yulinov. Nice have it. Center, Yulinov barreling down the left side, cuts around Maurice. And then he goes into the zone and it's picked up by Turgeon. And out at center it goes. Now Maurice has a chance by Buchanan. Maurice trying to move around Buchanan. Maurice looks in front, can't get the pass away. Buchanan staying with him, but a drive right on. Rassico stopped the Gord Donnelly drive. Yulinov chipped one near side. Ice have it, and it's banked to the line and out at center. Indianapolis with a puck at neutral, under five minutes to go in a 3-1 hockey game. Donnelly moves it up the left side. Donnelly shoots it into Indianapolis territory. Back to play it. Rassico, but Freer beat him to the puck. Kicked it to Arneal. It ricocheted out in front, and Darren Kimball moves it out. 4.37 to go. Kimball across the line with McIntyre. That is offsides, and play halted. 3-1 Houston. We'll be right back. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Refreshing Bud Ice, the official beer of the IHL. It's over, and you can put this one on ice. I trained my boy McNeil to go toe to toe with the champ, and he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him, and he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? 3-1 hockey game. Houston leading Indianapolis, 4.33 to go. And I know you're wondering about season tickets. They are on sale right now for the 95-96 season. Avoid the draft and enlist today. Call 627-AROW. Operators on duty now. Join the Arrow Force. Get ready for the battle of a lifetime. That's 627-A-E-R-O. And stay with us. Coming up, we're going to give away the trip. I know everyone's waiting to give away that. We're giving away a trip. Mark and Lanny from the Buzz are anxiously awaiting, I'm sure, to give away that trip, and we'll be going to them next break. Shakes to Yo. Fires it into the Indianapolis zone. Out of the net, Rassico. Hands to Dropa. Watched by Yo. And the ice bank into the line. Not out. 
came to the line. It's finally out at center. 4.16 to go. The arrows with a 3-1 lead. O'Connor gently rolled it into the Indianapolis zone. Dropa back to play it. And it cleared to Sarawick. Jeff Sarawick chipped it away, but knocked down by McCrory. Battle for the puck. And Indianapolis has it. Pass came to center. The arrows have it right back in. O'Connor. The arrows making line changes. 3.53 to go in the third, and the arrows lead at 3-1. Dubinsky tipped one into the arrow zone. Laniel was there. It's cleared his center. And Dropa reaching over Conroy to pick it up and play it. Dropa dropped it and fired it into the arrow zone. Nobson is there. It's cleared to the near side. And Turgeon will clear it to center. Turgeon in a battle with Buchanan. They get into it a little bit. We're going to get a whistle. Are they going to go? Buchanan wants Turgeon. They're getting in there. They're going to drop the gloves. And then Buchanan wanting it. Turgeon, the linesman, get in there. How about the referee, Bernie DeGrasson, there as well? Well, I've never seen Turgeon fight, I don't think, but I know Buchanan can throw him. He's a lefty. But uh, Turgeon, I'm sure, has seen his share. And DeGrace, you know, and I think I think I give credit to Grace on this one. He doesn't want to see anything chippy happen this late in the game. All right, the linesmen have broken it up, and as I promised, I have a little trip to give away along with Mark and Lanny, and let's go to those two. Mark, Lanny. Hi, as exciting as it may seem, we're Mark and Lanny from The Morning Buzz. And right now, call 777-5772, you and a friend, round trip airfare, Southwest Airlines of San Antonio. Remember the Alamo? Of course, we lost. 777-5772, call now. And if you missed dial, tell them we said hi. Hi, guys. And <laughs> I guess you hi, missed Buchanan. Dial. <laughs> I guess you missed dial. They've got those in their speed dollars. Jeff Buchanan right there, he leads the team with 27 penalty minutes. So far this year, and he'll take Turgeon off with him, and that will be just fine as we'll go four on four for the remainder of this game, or sorry, for the next two minutes, which will leave us a minute 31 with the remaining left of the game. 3 1 Houston and Terry Roskowski. You know, I have a feeling, and I could be totally way off base here, but I just I have a feeling that if the score remains the same and the Arrows win, it's going to look like they won a playoff game. They're going to be so relieved to get this out of their way. Maurice across the line. We're four on four for a couple of minutes. And it's Gauthier. They've really neutralized him well. Gauthier moving in across with a shot wide of the net. Picked up by Donnelly with 3.15 to go. Donnelly works one over to Laniel. He'll move it up and out at center. Laniel. Over to Maurice, into the zone it goes, and Rassico turns it around. We'll keep an eye on Rassico. There's still a minute or so before I think we'd see him get pulled if Bob Ferguson, the head coach of the ice, opts to do so. Puck shot down. Jakes is there, and that is icing. And the faceoff will go back down into the Indianapolis zone. Well, Steve Jakes has had a very strong game, as have all the, uh, the defensemen for the Arrows. One good thing about the uh, defenseman is, like we said, their, their ability to take control of the front of their own net. Jimmy Pack has done that very well tonight as well. Face off left side of Rashiko and Mark Freer. There's another guy, I think, you know, you're just glad to see him get back into the lineup because of his shoulder injury against Cincinnati. And I think it's still a little tender, but he's shown that he's not afraid to go in there and mix it up tonight. Well, there's a lot of stats that don't show how good a player has played, and he's played very well tonight, even though he's not on the board. Puck bounding into the slot, turned around by Dropa, cleared ahead, and here come the ice to center. Kip Miller barreling through the neutral zone with Lecomte, dumps it into the arrow end. Back to play it is Jakes. Another penalty coming up, and it will be on Houston. It will be hooking. Well, this could make it very interesting because it turns what was a four on four into a four on three. And as we said before, that's that's a very probably one of the best power plays other than a five on three. Instruction. Because there's so much room out there to work the puck around. And I'm sure you'll see Miller and LeCompte and a few guys like that out on the ice for this one. So a face-off in the arrow zone, and you're right. This four-on-three makes things very interesting as Arneal sits. There's a minute 13 left to Turgeon and Buchanan's penalties. And a fresh two minutes up to Scott Arneal, who now inches closer to his milestone. He certainly does, and, I, and once again, this is not a time of the game where he wants to do that. I, I really didn't see the call that, so I wasn't able to see whether it was a good one or not. Off the face-off, ice have it, Sarawick. Hands it over to Dropa. Right point. Ivan Dropa. Going to the left side. Sarah with the draw. Great pad save made by Dobson. And they grind it out along the boards. LeCompte digs it out. LeCompte to Sarawick getting set. Sarawick 
Hands it over, Dropa. One time shot, Thompson stopped it. Rebound cleared by Donnelly. Miller jammed it back to the line, but Dropa couldn't get there, and he had to go back to center and regroup. Ivan Dropa across the line, leaves for LeCompte. At the line, LeCompte over to Sarawick. Jeff Sarawick getting set, winding, shooting, Thompson, stick save. And the puck is Conroy. Crash convert as he had LeCompte on top of him. And it goes behind the arrow net. A minute 13 left in the Arneal Minor. Arrows take the puck and shoot it down. Rassico comes way out and plays it. Under two minutes to go. Rassico still in the pipe. Here comes the top, barreling right in. Stuff shot. That never got it on goal, though. And Jimmy Pack turned to clear, not out. Eldon Conroy to turn it back for Pack, and he will blast it along the board. Eldon by Ulanov. Igor Ulanov over to Dropa. Cutting in. Jammed it down for Miller. Kit Miller trying to center one. And it's now five on four for Houston as Turgeon comes out of the box with Buchanan. 40 seconds left in the Arneal Minor. 123 to play. Third period. Arrows lead at 3-1. Igor Ulanov. Right wing boards. Fire the puck ahead. Turn around by McCrory. And slapped right back down the ice. And the Arrows are a minute 14 away. Ulanov. Rolled one near side. And it comes to center. Dubinsky across the line with Black. Hit by Pack. Arrows turn. Can they get it out? No. Ethan Morrow. Now Rassico to the bench. We're under a minute to go. The ice need two. McCrory turns and clears one up and out of the end. It is picked up by Dubinsky. Dubinsky's pass across the line. Gauthier cutting in six on five for the extra attacker. Puck center and a one-time shot by Black is fanned off. And Ulanoff being hooked off the play by Scott O'Neill. 35 seconds to go. The cage is empty. And the arrows look like they're going to get win number one, barring a miracle from Indianapolis. Nice have it. Black shoots it in. Dobson slows, but Gauthier at the hash marks waits for it. Behind that Matlow centered, but McCrory was there. Can he get it out of the zone? Yes, he will. Right back down the ice. Arrows down to 15 seconds. Ice have it. It shot the neutral. Indy turning. Kip Miller through the neutral zone across the line. Miller moving in. Miller centered. Here's the shot. Dobson save. Wow. Unbelievable. And it only tells the story as the horns out. And the Houston Arrows get their first win of the year. And it's only fitting that Rob Dobson stands on his lips, get the guy some bliss decks, makes an unbelievable save at the end, and he gives the Arrows their first win of the year. Unbelievable. Well, I tell you what, that, that takes uh, such a load off the shoulders of every single player that's associated with the team, the coaching staff, and everyone, just because it's the first one, and after that, we'll see what happens. From now, they just build on, on the win. So the Houston Arrows, who are down in front, Rob Dobson, we knew it would be somewhat of a celebration. And look at this, Rob Dobson comes out to Terry and shakes his hand. <laughs> Dauber, going you right know, after everybody. You know what, always the comedian, Rob Dobson. <laughs> <laughs> he loves doing things like that, and, uh, and sure, and I, I think Rob Dobson is happy that he got the start because Terry could have just as easily gone with Troy Gamble, but he went with Rob Dobson, and Rob Dobson came up big for him. All right, so Rob Dobson comes up big along with the guys in front of him, and the Arrows pick up their first win. They win it 3-1, and their record now 1-6. When we return, we hope to chat with the Dauber. We'll have that when we return. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Well, it is official. The Houston Arrows have picked up win number one on the year. They have defeated the Indianapolis Ice by a score of 3-1. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And the sigh of relief for the Houston Arrows. And it takes us right to the Southwest Airlines. Just plain smart play of the game. And it came with only seconds remaining. Well, Dobson, strong all game. Makes a very good one-time save here as he butterflies and takes it right in the midsection and then clears the rebound right out of the way. And only that was only one of his many saves tonight. In fact, he will finish with 41 saves. That is a lot of work. And by the way, Southwest Airlines flying the little fair airline is just plain smart. But he did face a lot of work tonight. Yeah, he did face a lot of rubber. He stood up well, and he played to his strengths. He's a stand-up, stand challenging kind of goalie, and he did that all night long, and that's why he was successful. You know, and it would be easy to look at the goals by Slavchenko, by Laniel. Uh, those are the easy ones, but I was really impressed by the guys that really didn't score. We talked about Scott Arneal. Graham Townsend, I thought, had a big game. The arrows really worked well as game. Gord Donnelly, I thought, was one of the top defensemen out there. He, I think he was the top defenseman out there. He, he made a lot of good plays clearing the puck out, and he made a lot of good hits down low 
cleared a lot of room out for Rob Dobson so Rob Dobson could see the puck and stop it. So I'll ask you the same question that I asked you earlier if you're Terry Ruskowski. I guess you're right. We don't mess with a streak. You expect Rob Dobson for Friday? I do, and that's not, it has nothing against uh, Troy Gamble because Troy said Troy Gamble's played excellent. But when a goalie wins, you want to continue with that role and use his confidence because the team's going to be confident with that goalie right off the bat next game. Well, the man we've been talking about is with us right now. He is uh, Rob Dobson. Dauber, congratulations. Great game. Oh, thank you very much. It's, uh, I tell you, the longest third period of my life going in there, the way we've been playing. But, you know, I give a lot of credit to the guys in front. They did a great job clearing the, clearing the lanes. It was real easy to see the pucks. And, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I didn't feel as great in the warm-up as I normally did. But sometimes when you don't feel so well, you concentrate a bit more. And, and all my, my hat goes off to everybody in the room. You know, we've been under a bit of adversity lately, but to come back and play hard, it's a good stepping stone for a hockey team, and I think everybody played really well tonight. Well, I want you to switch gears, go from goaltender to color analyst. We have some of your saves for you. Can you talk about some of these for us? <laughs> well, you know, I think here, if, if this is the second period when those guys are down, see the way the lane's cleared there? And, uh, you know, I've been talking with Mike and Troy. My game is to challenge, and, you know, sometimes when you don't see the puck as well, you, you tend to get back on your heels. But if you look here, the defense did a good job to clear the lane, and, and uh, allow me to see the puck. <laughs> Let me just see. A a Adam, there was 41 of them, so I'm going to have to think about a few of them there. <laughs> <You> got, <laughs> there was a lot of them. That, that was an offside play. But again, if you look to every shot tonight, you know, other than a couple I made in the first period, I think the guys did a great job to, to clear the rebounds and, and to allow me to see the puck. And that's a real positive note for us because we have been struggling a bit defensively. Dauber, you're a stand-up goalie. You like the challenge. Uh, we talked about your game after the Fort Wayne game. You and I, we, you, you agreed that you didn't challenge as well. You really challenged tonight. Did you make a conscious effort to uh, to, stop, to catch the puck and, and direct it to the corner more tonight? Because it seemed like you were clearing the rebounds really well. Mike, and, and you'll attest to this, you know, being a part of the union, that when you're seeing the puck well and your confidence in there, you have, you, you have a lot of confidence in your abilities to do a lot more out there. I look to the Cincinnati game. I think that I handled the puck a little better there than I have most of last year and this year, and tonight especially. Again, when you see that puck, you can get it to the corner. I made a good play in the second period there to, you know, we were trying to kill a penalty there to get the puck up to Scotty Arneal. But, again, back to the Fort Wayne game, that's what, that was little things I wasn't doing correctly. And, and, you know, when a team isn't going well, it's very, very important for the goaltender to do the little extra to make it easy in the defensive zone. And, you know, I think both Troy and I have had to make a conscious effort to kind of pick the guys up and, and let them know that if there's a breakdown, we're going to be there for them. But, again, it just comes with seeing the puck, and, and the guys allowed me to see it most of the evening. Dauber, one final question I have to ask you. Right after the game, you went up, shake Terry Ruskowski's hand. What would you say to him? Well, it's just, a, you know, I didn't really say anything to him. It's just, you know, he's been under a lot. You know, you, you look to Montreal and what's happened there. They're off to a bad start. We're off to a slow start. I think, you know, as much pressure has been put on the players, as there, there's twice as much on the coach. You know, unfortunately for Terry, he, he takes his game personally. But that's a good thing for us because it forces everyone to want to play harder. And, you know, he hasn't been the guy on the ice. He, he doesn't score goals. He doesn't make saves. He doesn't make defensive plays. And, you know, I think it's just the weight of the world off Terry's shoulders because the guys came together and finally played a good solid 60 minutes and a good road game to get a good win. Dauber, thanks for your time. And again, congratulations. A great effort tonight. Thank you very much. All right, goaltender Rob Dobson, the Arrows win it by a score of three to one and I want to remind our network affiliates that we will be taking a couple of one minute breaks and this is the first of those arrows win at three one and we'll have more from Indianapolis right after this. Houston Arrows victorious tonight by a score of 3-1 here at Market Square Arena and everybody's a little happy and I you know I just want to say once again uh, and I, this is credit to Aaron Silverman by the way in the truck he said Adam you and Mike got to wear the golf shirts it's going to turn it around so the man in the truck Aaron Silverman he calls the shot tonight does that mean we have to wear golf shirts for the rest of the year hey I'll tell you what I'll wear I'll wear a tank top if that's what it took I mean the Arrows did her tonight and they did it in fine fashion and and, and I think the thing is is that you finally saw I think what we saw tonight is the team we expected to see three goals not a lot but enough to win and the defense did the rest we saw some great defense and terrific goaltending well I'll tell you what and and this is this rings true with so many teams uh, if you take care of your own end you'll find yourself get being successful down at the other end now they did had to leave a lot of shots on goal and uh, Dobson had to be unbelievable tonight but you know what in order to break out of a slump, you need your goalie to come up with a big game like that. Now that he's out of that, now that they are out of that slump, I think you're going to see a bigger conscious effort to be defensive. 
uh, as far as the arrows are concerned. And let us not forget folks the arrows throughout all this have not had Kevin Grant. They have not had Gord Krupke. Freer was injured in Cincinnati. I, I mean everybody just seems to be getting banged up when you get these guys healthy. Uh, this is going to be a different hockey. Come talk to me in January during the All-Star break is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. This team, once they get all their guys healthy and everybody going through the rotation and, and there's a little more competition for those positions and guys wanting to play and, and really putting out that kind of effort, then you're going to see the kind of success that the Arrows saw last year. Let's take a look at the final stats and they will show you a, a, an interesting story. The 42 shots to 22. But remember, 20 of those 42 shots came in that second period when it was the period of obstruction, if you will. 41 saves for Rob Dobson, 19 saves for Andre Rossico. The Arrows took 11 penalties for 22 minutes, 7 penalties for 14 minutes for the Indianapolis Ice. Arrows finish 1 of 4 on the power play. The Indianapolis Ice finish 1 of 7, including a shorthanded goal tonight by the Houston Arrows. 3-1 the final. Arrows now 1-6 on the year. And we'll wrap things up from Indy when we return. Three one Houston the arrows defeating the Indianapolis ice Adam Gordon Mike Greenlay and I'm just kind of kind of looking over some numbers here and, and, and this is the first time you look at the happy totals and Steve Jakes finishes plus one Scott O'Neill plus one Al Conroy plus two along with Mark Laniel uh, Slavchenko Townsend and Terja finish plus one and we talked a little bit about Sylvain Terja scores a goal and an assist tonight and you're starting to see the legs now I mean he kind of comes in the three games in three nights but he's playing well. Well, I tell you what, if you come to one of the games, and I'm sure you will after seeing this win, you'll see Terjean, the way he works. It, and, not, and not just what he does with the puck. The, the mark of a good player is sometimes what he does away from the puck. And he, he gets open. He, he finds those spots. And then when he does go after the puck, he goes after it with a vengeance. He hits hard, and he makes things happen. And that's why he's going to be such a good addition, and they're already seeing dividends from, from him. We've talked about at length all the things, the keys, the arrows needed to do to win. I mean, we went with the golf shirts. We saw communication down there. But... Again, I want to take you back to the beginning of the hockey game when I asked head coach Terry Wyskowski his keys, and here's what Roscoe said. Terry? Well, Adam, tonight's keys are win, uh, win, and win. Thanks, Roscoe. Huh. And, and look at the score. They won. They did win. They, they, they really listened to the game plan. I'm sure Terry had more than just that to say to them in the dressing room, but it, it does show you that everyone wanted to win, not just Terry. Everybody wanted to win because they came out and really put a good effort forward tonight. Peter, thanks. Thank you. Congratulations to the Houston Arrows for their first win of the year. Their next action will be against the Detroit Vipers on Friday. The executive producer of Houston Arrows Hockey is Paul Bykowski. Tonight's game has been produced by Aaron Silverman. Remote production facilities provided by VTE. Transmission services provided by the Hughes Television Network. Saturday Night on Ice continues Saturday, November 11th, when the Arrows take on the Milwaukee Admirals live from Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Coming up next on UPN 20, it's the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And for our radio listeners on KPRC, we return you to your regularly scheduled programming.